when you see mine, you, it's I, interesting because put a lot on our plate for next year. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like one, two, one, yeah. two. I'm yeah. like, oh my god! But you need some That's balance. That's why I wanted to put comments. <laughs> By the way, I only had one four because everything on that list is worth being on the list, right? Yeah, I think I had. I think maybe one four as well. Yeah, maybe two. I think <laughs> when I look at, I don't know how you get out of there. What don't you do, right? We might have to double the size of the board of selectmen. <laughs> just for three years. Or just double their workload. <laughs> yeah, we'll double your pay. Well, you have, you have to do that yeah, too. I know. Yeah. As I'm going through that, I'm like, wow, I'm yeah. putting a lot of one twos, one two, one two. <laughs> yeah, the extra pay would be great. Yeah, it would. But you know, especially double. That's if actually you double it. That would double. double. There you go. <laughs> Given the amount of uh, scrubbing that's gone on, I, I would hope that they were all ones and twos, right? That all the Imagine the headline. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, it's 7 o'clock. Any word from Marcy, Marcy for tonight? She's uh, late on the train. She pinged me and said she'd be here late, so but she's coming. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the September 2nd, 2014 Board of Selectmen meeting. I hope all of you enjoyed your Labor Day holiday. Yes, we did. I was driving back from uh, New York, and uh, the weather on Sunday was pretty threatening. Saturday, mm -hmm. or uh, Monday, uh, wasn't a bad day after all, things considered. Um, tonight, we'll open with uh, liaison reports and public comment, if any. We'll hear from our town manager uh, for his uh, report. We'll have discussion on uh, some proposals for the island in front of... Uh, Near CVS, near Town Pizza, the uh, Reading Garden Club has some proposals for Adopt an Island that uh, we'll review. Um, as part of that, a discussion, a related discussion on a tree removal. We'll get a report from the Human Relations Advisory Committee. We'll have a hearing for a liquor violation for Ricky's Liquor, uh, 214 Main Street, sale to a minor. At 9 o'clock, we'll uh, discuss and, and close the warrant for the special town meeting uh, to be held on September 29th. Um, and we'll also um, vote the warrant articles for that same special town meeting. You'll get a sense of uh, <coughs> where the board is on some of these topics. As well as, hard to believe, take a look at the warrant for the subsequent town meeting in, in November. Um, closing out the evening, we'll talk about our preparation for the financial forum on September 10th and speak, uh, finalize the FY15 town manager goals. So it's a pretty full agenda, and we'll finish the evening <coughs> with um, uh, approval of our minutes. Um, just to open the evening, um, a couple of points. I did attend a, a as some of you may know, I'm on, I am uh, representing the Board of Selectmen on the Reading Municipal Schools um, Naming Committee, which had reformed uh, to entertain three nomination candidates for ostensibly a field or a building or a hallway or a room. Um, the group met, I think, certainly two times, if not more. And the consensus was that the current policy as written at the school level is inadequate from a clarity and a um, independent assessment of the candidates. There's very little material in terms of how do you review the candidate, what are the minimum criteria, um, how do you scale it, how do you rank A versus B. By way of example, one of the candidates had a single page form the entirety of their nomination. One of the other candidates had, I want to say, 35 pages. So just merely in formulation, it was unclear how to assure that the nominees were best represented by their sponsors. Um, uh, Joanne King and myself took uh, uh, the, the task to go out and propose a template based on best practices at other schools. We went back with a, uh, a package to this third meeting of the committee, and uh, there is now at least a straw man of a review process for nominations that dictates the length of the report of the nomination, the content that should be contained within it, the criteria that should be considered. And most of all, this is not for necessarily the naming of a building, but rather a nomination to an effectively an educator hall of fame. Uh, the group left as a next assignment and agreed to take on the task of field naming and facilities naming, which would be built upon the existing foundation. 
and uh, amplify some of the criteria that's already that are already built already in place for this uh, this higher honor of a facilities or a field name. So that's been pretty rewarding. I mean, the schools are represented, the uh, uh, school committees represented, uh, members at large are represented. Obviously, the board of selectmen is represented, and uh, it, it's pretty effective. I thought it was a pretty effective use of the group's time. For uh, three or four hours' work, we've really got a lot of work done. Uh, that's okay. that's the bulk of my remarks. <coughs> Kevin, any any comments? Um, I have no comments as right now, Mr. Chairman. Dan, uh, no uh, liaison meetings to report, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a promise to the board that, that the revised <coughs> 2014 town manager review form will be emailed to uh, the board this week. It, I don't have it done yet, but it will be done. That's very good. Yeah. John. Um, yeah, I've got a couple. Um, actually, two sort of independent reports back uh, relative to the, my role with the Recreation Committee. Um, one of them is quite timely um, in light of what you've been doing, John. Um, I have received some requests to nominate some town properties for naming purposes. And, um, it, and they sought me out because they know that I'm on the Recreation Committee and these are athletic fields that had come up um, that are not part of the uh, school property. So, um, you know, in, in doing a little homework, we find that we, the selectmen don't really have a policy for, you know, for town properties as such. Um, and the fact that this, you know, sounds like all the groundwork has been done, or a lot of the groundwork has been done, let's just put it that way. Um, I'm going to suggest that this board um, consider engaging an ad hoc committee to create a policy for the Board of Selectmen um, relative to the naming of town properties and town fields. So, so that's kind of timely, and it and it sounds like a lot of the work has been a lot of work is underway, and I think a lot of it will one will replicate the other. But I think that if we can tonight. Um, I mean, I would certainly volunteer to be involved, but John, you've got a lot of um, current experience as well. So I just think that it's important for us to create our own ad hoc committee to be able to go forward with those with those kind of naming proposals so that people have something to work with. Um, and doing so avoids the other problem, which is you have a worthy candidate, but no ready means to evaluate right. them or right. others like them. I can say that uh, on this topic, um, I, I happen to have a seat on the um, on the Reading Athletic Hall of Fame, and after many years of trying to sort through just such questions, um, I think two years ago we put together a kind of a form that matched uh, what we really needed to know, and so when we get a nomination, we would go forward with asking the the nominator to complete the form. If they wanted to add additional information, that would be fine. And of course, the committee does its own research anyway. But I just think that there seems to be quite an appetite in a lot of different directions here. So I think it's important that the Board of Selectmen um, institute a policy so that people know where to go with it. So I think that's something we're going to need to do tonight. Um, I'm suggesting that we, you know, <coughs> agree <coughs> with the hot committee for this purpose. Okay. Um, the other thing that um, is tied to the Recreation Department is, and I think we're going to hear from a, a member in the public um, reports, um, I was able to make a site visit tied to a request that's going to be coming before us that is more of an extension of something we've already agreed to as a body. And that is, you know, on the grass field behind, kind of uh, behind turf two, you know, out where the, uh, um, where the discus and shot put guys get their get their start. Uh, there's a proposal um, that uh, and it wanted to, there's already lighting out there. Right. Um, there's a proposal that another one more um, pole going up with the same kind of lighting will just enhance what's going on there for a couple of reasons. Big demand. Um, as you all know, we've heard that um, <coughs> the 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 Reading Flag Football Organization is just getting, and they work in concert with the Recreation Department, are getting landmark applications to play. And so by doing this, it'll create two small fields 
you know, and really be able to accommodate everybody. And secondarily, it will create the freshmen are out on that field. They don't get to use the, you know, the, uh, the turf fields. And so it'll actually provide adequate lighting. So I, I bring that up. I think we're going to hear more about that in the public comment. And, and um, it, it seemed to me to just be an extension of what we're currently doing. A pretty simple fix and the funding is um, all but taken care of so um, so there's that going on the last thing in the liaison report is um, I visited um, um, I, I have become as a result of my uh, liaison capacity from the Board of Selectmen I've become a member of the Board of Directors of our CASA and I was at their last regular meeting and um, frankly I you know I was a little disturbed by something I heard at my first meeting that there had been something removed from the health and wellness program um, at the middle schools um, and felt like that was a topic that our CASA should have a discussion about and a discussion ensued um, and Superintendent Doherty who you know would really have the proper information to fill in the blanks was unable to attend um, but He's being asked as the superintendent by our CASA um, to explain, you know, what we've done in substitution for the thing that we've taken away. I mean, as all of us know, there's a huge concern around um, the work of our CASA and the progress. You know, it's not where we want it to be yet and may never be where we completely want it to be, but every step we can take and is important. Um, I can also say that a big topic of discussion at that same meeting was um, the medical marijuana zoning. Um, they reviewed that, um, had a good discussion about it, and voted unanimously to um, endorse the, the program that's currently on the table. So those are the kind of the two things that were going on at our CASA. So that ends my report. John, was there an opinion voiced by the school committee in response to that? Did they take a position? Well, there was only one, there was one member of the school committee there that felt like there wasn't enough data to really respond. And yeah, I understand that. I mean, it, it wasn't an agenda item. It was an item that I made an agenda item at the end of the meeting. And so, in fairness, um, the representative from the school committee, um, who also happens at the moment to be the current um, chair, the president, um, has taken steps to inform Dr. Doherty of our concerns and, you know, ask for an explanation. And so I, I know all that will be forthcoming. So, good. Good. Thank you, John. Uh, public comment. Mr. McFadden. Yeah, if you could just move that. Actually, if, Carl, if you don't mind if we just hold on this till yes. any other... Any other discussions not regard regarding any of the liaison reports? Any other public comment, Mr. Brown? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, wait I'll yield to Cal. He's bigger than I am. <laughs> Carl, you get the baton again. Yes. Thank you. I mean, um, and he's better looking. Yeah. <laughs> um, Carl McDonald, 3308 North Street. Um, just real quick, uh, John Fiero wanted to be here, but he's spearheading the the uh, street fair. It's big meeting tonight, so he might not be able to be here. Um, one of the things, as uh, Ms. Halsey mentioned, the Saturday Nights program, uh, when I came before you a month or so ago, uh, is just exploded. We've got almost 600 kids. And we, and we just don't want to, you get to a certain point where you just don't want to say no. Um, and uh, what we're looking to do is we're trying to find additional field space, which everyone's there. If everyone can, sorry, um, if, if you're aware of, and I apologize for blocking this, I'm not good with this type of stuff. This is turf two, okay? You have lights that are lighting up, the telephone poles that are lighting up turf two. And then there's uh, two poles here that I believe the Army Corps of Engineers did that light up. Like, this field is actually lined for the freshman football and pop one iron soccer, et cetera. It only lights maybe about 20 yards, thereabouts. And then you have the shot put area, discus area. And then right on the other side is what we'd be looking to do is put a pole right here. We can't, on these poles here, the Army Corps was able to put them on the back side and shine them there. For whatever reason, they, start, they weren't able to do put a light here. 
because if they did, they'd have to tie it into this pole. So when this field would be lit up, that just one lamp would be lit up and they weren't able to go. I'm not sure, that's what we are told by the light department that came out. So <coughs> what we wanted to make you aware of what Mr. Fiero wanted to do, and we've been communicating um, with RMLD and they're very anxious to do this, is just put one light pole on the other side of the, light, um, the discus area, which would shine here, which would give us an extra 100 feet of width. So instead of it being just 25 yards, it would be half a field, shall we say. We'd be lit up so that we don't have to um, place the kids all the way down to Castine because it kind of takes away from the environment. So we, instead of using Castine for one field, we can just put them right there and that way we're able to, um, we have about 12 fields going on the Saturday nights. And Carl, that area you're pointing to, the area to the uh, closer to Birch Meadow, that's already lit. This is kind of a dead spot in the middle of the field. Is that yeah, the you remember like the little softball field that's yeah. right here? Yeah. That's that's the area that's all dead. So you're, you're filling in a hole that's been there exactly. for years. Yeah. You, you said two things, pole and light. Can this be addressed by merely the addition of incremental lighting, or do you need this, the pole no, structure? No, the, the way the, this pole here, the distance, yep. is just too far. They okay. need, uh, um, RMLD needs to put a, a they, can, they, they said they could actually just put a temporary pole up there, and then they just put the same exact lights up there that Mr. Fudo would be able to do. It's going to take approximately two to three weeks to get the lights. What Mr. Fudo did this afternoon was actually rent a temporary one of those temporary generators, probably same one like the highway yep. that so, light up. So part of 93 is dark now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so he, he wants to be able to, to he'll light that up temporarily because you know Saturday night we do we do start. Um, and this is you know this is something I certainly know from my days of coaching Pup Warner. I know. Pup Warner would love to have it because they only have the 25 yards. There's a lot more used soccer, a lot of lacrosse, et cetera. So really what we're looking to do is, is ask is one additional pole which would open up, light up another 90 feet, which would take care of all everyone's needs. I think it is important to note that we don't, from everything I understand, probably correct me if I'm wrong, um, we're not going to be seeking additional funds. No. This is really the completion of a Correct. program that yeah. started through some volunteer work through Correct. the Corps of Engineers and yep. and with the lighting that, uh, so there's money from the lighting in the Recreation Department who partners with um, the flag football. Yeah, it, um, you know, but we're the vendor, but, but it's a Reading Recreation is your program. Right. Um, and, the, and the revenue coming from that will be able to pay yeah. this. So, you know, I, I guess at the end of the day, the important thing to note is that we're really not talking about additional funds. We're talking about the completion of a project that didn't quite get finished. Yeah. And, Ninety-five percent. You know, left yeah. us a little bit short, and this adds some permanence to that. I, my visit, um, and I have spent a lot of time down in those fields, as many of you know. I think it's just a very nice completion piece to what's already been done there, um, and can be handled without additional yeah. funds being appropriate. And. Uh, Colleen, the, the general manager on LD has been wonderful, and her staff came out the next morning to take care of it, to tell us what would need to be done. Bob? I just asked Carl, and just really as a courtesy to the board, I agree with John's comments. It, it really seems in the spirit of the scope of the original project. Sure. Just so you all saw sure. this. If it had it impacted the neighborhood and was going to be putting lights in people's living rooms, we would have had a hearing, but it's nothing like that. What, what formal action of the board is needed to? I, I don't think you need to do anything, just really as a courtesy. I thought yeah. Carl's more than FYI. I think if we had an objection, we'd have to take action and, sure. you know, and have a public hearing. But to me, the public hearing has happened already yeah. because this is just kind of the completion of the, of the project. And it's very clear when you stand down there in the day or the night, you can kind of see that it, it's missing a pole. So the nighttime discus program is, is gone. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one of the other things it, it, that is somewhat important but not is the fact that you know the way it is now when we're when our activity is going on this area is pretty dark still like this is, is lit up where you know potholes anyone falling a little more sympathetic having this boot on there looking out the potholes <laughs> and, and, and falling in the night but you know that's a lot of, I want to say it's a cut through but you know, a lot of kids are coming from the YMCA and that sure, area, which sure. also help both the lighting there. Dan, did you have a question? Yeah I did I fully uh, endorse what you want to do to Carl. Uh, just a plea that whenever possible, uh, either the type of light or the direct 
direction of the light be selected to, to avoid what's called light leakage. Yep. There's a lot of light leakage from yep. turf, the turf two lights. Apart, I mean, I can hit, hit yep. people in the face coming down Parkview Road. Yeah. It's so the shield. It, yeah, but and maybe the staff can do something about directing those yep. a little differently so you get more light on the field, less yep. shining up. So that, that, yep. that's all I have. Okay. Yeah. So, any other comments from the board? Thank you, Carl. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Yeah. <coughs> Any other public comment before we move on? Now, Mr. Brown. Uh, thank you. Phil Brown, please. 828 Latin Road. I noticed in the uh, community connection this week, uh, this month, that they showed the completion of the rock climbing wall at the Bridge Meadow School. However, it is not complete because it is not ADA conforming. It does not have handicap accessibility. And when I talked to the mm -hmm. recreation di director, he told me they ran out of funds. And in my opinion, you should not start up something like that unless you have funds to complete it. Mm -hmm. Because we are required to make it a handicap accessible. And you all know that I have grandson mm -hmm. from time to time needs it. I will fight like hell for him. Would that have come out of school? School side of the budget? No, that came out of recreation. Okay. The capital voted by town meeting? I don't know whether the capital was voted by town meeting or not, but I know. <coughs> That now it does not. So, uh, so is that on school property or is it on? Yeah, town? it's on school property. It's on school property. Right. So I I don't want to write a letter to 1310 Ashburton Place. Hmm. That's the ADA in case you want to know. I've done it two or three times. Right when the 16 low. Huh? Right when the 16 low. Right here. Well, I'm doing it right now, so I'll save you the money. Uh, thank you. Um, when I talked to you about this, I don't know, a week or two ago, you were going to go talk to the schools. Did you ever need to do that? No, I haven't. Okay. Because I would agree with you, there's, there's no reason we should have, quote, unquote, run out of funds. Yeah. That's not a good reason. No. I'll, I'll, do you talk to John Feudal about it? I haven't yet, no. Okay. I, I just thought I'd bring it to the board. And, you we'll know, check, I, we'll I think it's in keeping with your policy. You guys set policy from time to time. Yep. And I'm sure you don't follow up and everything, but one of the policies should be to make everything ADA compliant. Okay. Now after construction, this would have been deeded or granted or titled to the school, right? It's the schools all along, I'm sure. But I don't know the ends and outs. Thank you. There's always that one <laughs> question of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I already have one file cabinet with the ADA so So have you um, have you spoken to somebody in recreation but not John Few? No, John's the only one I've talked to in this. Said that you out of so, and when mm -hmm. I talked to my daughter about it, she says that's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Any other public comment? Mm -hmm. I, I, I think we're public comment. Oh, you have your the next agenda. Oh, oh, agenda. oh, we're actually on it. Thank you. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, um, I just want to call your attention to one thing. Um, a majority of you, in fact, everyone I heard from can meet next, uh, oh, that's your next meeting is on the 23rd. So at six o'clock next door, we'll have an executive session. I just want to make sure you're all there. Yes. Yeah. While we'll post it and send it to the <coughs> uh, The rest I have is going to be covered by tonight. I, I wrote you um, I will say a couple of us took a walk down to uh, a brand new business on uh, Haven Street today. If so anyone guess what the first day was today for a store that's Reopened. Hitching post. Hitching post. post was packed. She had uh, more flowers there from customers and from other businesses welcoming her back. It was really nice. She's got a very nice space. She's been working in there for a couple weeks to uh, populate it, and um, it's a great location. She's already found out just moving down to the other end of the street. It's a whole different clientele. Mm -hmm. Where she was, she was a destination in the middle of banks. Now she's not necessarily the destination because there's a lot of the retail businesses around there. She's already feeling in one day the benefit from that. So I thought that was nice. That's all. Thank you. Um, Marcy, thank you for joining us. Yes, I would have been here sooner, as I said. My train was delayed. Yes. Um, at this hour, we have a. Um, Discussion from the Reading Garden Garden Club regards some proposals around uh, adopting our See awards. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, uh, non non edibles. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I remember how much food you had every time you have that annual event. It's unbelievable. We do have a nice reception. Besides Very growing nice. plants yes. in, a, in a wonderful way that are abundant, we also make great, great desserts. Um, well, since 1995, the Reading Garden Club, along with the town in a great partnership, we have um, cared for nearly 100 island sites in town. People have volunteered to maintain, plant, and design those sites. And um, some people even have multiple sites. So it's quite a great group of volunteers. And the Garden Club, within our 49 members, we have a small committee that oversees that along with um, town government. We've had meetings with the town manager, with the town planner. So we try to do it in a, a strong partnership. This year on July 25th, oh, I'm looking at all these wonderful gardeners out here. On July 25th, we had another uh, contest to encourage our volunteers that maintain these sites to really upstage how they usually plant or have planted in the past. Um, so 1995 we began, we're almost 20 years old. And tonight, I wanted to tell you that on July 25th, we had six judges representing a variety of people in the community. Dan Ensminger represented the board. Thank you, Dan. Welcome. And we divided into two teams of three each, North and South. They looked at how the gardens were designed, maintained, and conditions of the plants. And um, gave them all values, made um, comments, and we made decisions. There, of these 100 islands, there are four distinct categories. There are barrels, and um, there are many barrels. Actually, there are, um, of the 100 sites, there are 24 barrels in town. Of the 24 barrels, three barrels were chosen first, second, and honorable mention. So the president of Garden Club this, this year, with your permission, Anya will um, present these awards to those winners. Um, first place was Marilyn Simons. Her barrel is down at the depot. It's absolutely beautiful. Second place was the <coughs> Batchelder Neighbors. And um, hopefully tonight, uh, Kim Curtis could be with us. An honorable mention um, is uh, Betty and Jack Walsh, and Betty is not feeling well tonight, so I know she won't be here. Then the next, um, the next grouping were individuals and families that took care of sites. Um, Tina Lance at Arthur B. Lord Drive in Birch Meadow with the benches. It's absolutely lovely. Second place was my husband and myself. I didn't do that. <laughs> we were at Hopkins in Maine. Um, and uh, honorable mention is uh, Megan Shaw Scarbo. Megan just had a baby girl three days ago, so Megan will not be with us tonight. She's at the high school field um, by the shot put area around the flagpole. She's done a very nice um, design. Um, the businesses, clubs, and organizations for the second year in a row, are the Senior Center Gardeners, um, Jane Burns, and hopefully Joe is here as well to accept um, the certificate this year. And second place is RCTV, uh, Gardening with the Hot. It's Janice Hot, Phil, Phil uh, Rushworth, sure. and it's right outside. It's, the, it's really quite a beautiful garden. If you don't have an opportunity to really look at it, walk around it, it's lovely. And then, um, for honorable mention, um, Chris Redford is here representing the Crystal Garden Club of Wakefield, and they have planted lovely perennial gardens on the parking lot side around the Senior Center. Um, and the last category is professional landscapers. We have um, 10 professional landscapers in town that have donated, again, funds, time, and the maintenance of islands. First place is a brand new landscaper to town for this year. It's Michael Minahan, and he's down at the corner of Ash and Main, across from um, McDonald's, McDonald's yep. that fast food place. Um, second place um, is Vinny Shanley, who's also new this year to the uh, program. And Vinny is the strip garden right out here by Town Hall in front of the parking lot. <coughs> and honorable mention, 
is Mica Lawn, which is Lawn, which is Renewal Landscaping. And for this garden, he has a, multiple gardens. His, this garden is at High and Woburn at the depot. First place um, not only gets a certificate, but they also get a gift certificate to a garden center from the garden club. Well, why not? <laughs> um, but we do so appreciate letting all of these wonderful people come tonight so that you know how hard they work. And they truly work hard. It's been a little tricky the past few days because the weather has been either pelting rain a stifling hot, so maybe wait until Friday to take a walk around town <laughs> <laughs> until they have an opportunity to replenish themselves with uh, good, moist fall air. Um, so Anya, if you wouldn't mind, and if you're here, if you, you please wouldn't mind to John, perhaps, to come up with Anya and Bob, and we can pass out these wonderful gift certificates. The first one is Marilyn Simons. I know Marilyn is here. And um, then the Batchelder Neighbors. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks. Marilyn. A lot of fun. A lot of work. <laughs> Second year in a row for Marilyn, too. And, um, and then I'll be Betty Walsh, I know, is ill. And then we have um, the individuals. Tell me what to do tonight. Sure, I love to tell people to do. <laughs> there are 33 individual um, volunteers that do these gardens, and uh, first is Tina Lance. I thought I saw Tina come in. <laughs> and um, then uh, Megan Scarbo with her brand new baby girl Evelyn. Um, then we have um, the uh, businesses and clubs or organizations, you know, things like Girl Scouts and Senior Center and things like that. Um, this is for the Senior Center Gardeners, Jane. Actually, I'm going to interject right here now because my role with the Senior Center Gardens is to drive Joe to Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> I did see Joe come in. <laughs> Our gardeners, Joe Plano, yeah. Linda Perry, and Marilyn Simons. They are actually the gardeners at the Senior Center. And the best part of this garden, it's a blended garden. It's um, flowers and vegetables. So, Joe, do you eat those vegetables? Every chance I get. Okay, there you go. There you go. Good answer. Good answer. We actually serve uh, the vegetables at the senior center during lunch. It's tomatoes and fresh peppers, and they're sliced and put out for the residents. And those that are left over, uh, the visitors are welcome to take any extras home with them. That's great. And then the beautiful garden right outside the front door is um, ACTV. Janice Hart is the designer and caretaker, and yeah. Phil is in the back there. Yes. Everybody knows Phil. Yes. Yes. And, and I have lots of help. All of these people are helping. Oh, yes. that's yes. terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> there, are, there are also little ribbons on their signs. And by the way, the town pays for the signs. Um, which is, is a terrific uh, partnership again. Um, so, and then with the landscapers, oh, the Crystal Chris Garden Redford. Club. Chris Redford is here as um, a representative of the Crystal Garden Club. And that's on the parking lot side of the Senior Center. It's perennials and roses, it's lovely. And then we can go to um, the landscapers, Mike Minahan, was having dental work, and I don't think Mike was going to be able to come. And Vinnie Shenley, nope. And then um, and uh, uh, Michael Long for renewal. Michael had a busy day with his his client, so he emailed me at six. I guess he's still digging. Um, <laughs> And good for him. Let's good let's get the town looking great. But I so appreciate the partnership and look forward to continued partnership. Next year will be our 20th um, reunion, the anniversary of this program, and we hope to plan something quite spectacular that you all can come to. 
Thanks again. Thank you very much. You know, as you drive through Reading, you're greeted by these blasts of color at strategic corners and intersections. And it strikes me that's one of the most visible and vibrant examples of, maybe it's a, a little bit of a twist, but a public-private partnership. You folks are doing the public work, uh, the private work, and the public is gathering <coughs> and garnering the benefit of that. Um, it's very much appreciated particularly from somebody like me who struggles to grow grass and <laughs> if anyone wants any proof you can drive by Francis Drive and take water, a look. Water, lots of water. <laughs> That's the problem. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you Thank again. Um, next we will have a hearing <coughs> on a public tree removal at 640 to 660 Main Street. Notice, please. Please take notice that the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Reading will hold a public hearing on September 2nd, 2014 at 7.30 p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on the town's request to remove one six-inch diameter Zalkova tree located in front of 640-660 Main Street. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic is available in the Town Manager's Office, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., Tuesday from 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. and is attached to the hearing notice on the website at www.readingma.gov. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearing or may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 6 p.m. on September 2nd, 2014 to town manager at ci.reading.ma.us. Thank you. Um, thank you. pictures and everyone knows the location it's as you're exiting CVS it's to the right right in front of this fellow store um, right now there's three trees in front of that uh, space a little bit of an elevated island uh, shape in front and that was all um, a product of the downtown renovation the downtown phase one if you will improvements um, in, in meeting with some of the area businesses <clears throat> and some of the residents and then subsequently with two of the landscapers, we were discussing an option of um, making that a little more business friendly in terms of visibility, but also uh, business and pedestrian friendly in terms of a place to sit and congregate. You've seen, uh, the board has seen um, three different uh, requests in that area for outdoor seating. Um, only one is still is being used right now, the bakery. Uh, the yogurt store is still not put out their bench and Grumpy's is still not uh, open uh, with the nice pad. Bunratties. I'm sorry, Bunratties. Grumpy's is open with their one. Yes, very much open. Yeah, yeah very much. <laughs> <For now. laughs> um, so the idea of having people outside is, is certainly in that area, certainly a growing one. But each of those three is uh, assigned, if you will, a specific business. This would be a more generic place. Certainly if you were doing any kind of um, passing by, uh, right now you'll see there's three benches on each side of the, that island if you will and they're almost always someone at one of those benches at least other than maybe when it's 90 degrees um, it's it's pretty busy and there's more people walking around with food now especially if you've just shopped down the street that may not want to sit right in front of the store maybe that store is busy and this would be another area to, to congregate um, and the area businesses that I've spoken to I was able to speak to three out of four in that immediate area were all very much in favor of it and uh, I know Peter Sims is here tonight to uh, give you his opinion. Um, the idea being that if we would take out the middle tree and probably need to do a little pruning on the two end trees, um, the three trees are, are healthy and have done well, but the middle tree is really in the way of anything else you'd do with that space if you wanted to use it for seating. So one option, and I have two options that I will show the board. Um, is to just allow for more seating by removing the tree, bricking in the center in two different ways, and either putting in long benches, which the current landscaper had in mind, or the woman who designed the entry to town hall had a more oval shape, which would allow for more seating, a little bit more informal seating. So I'll show you those two plans. Uh, in fairness, in your packet and over the weekend, we got a couple of emails from people who didn't want to take the tree down, and you've seen those. Yes. And we got a couple of uh, favorable reports today. We actually delivered a message to all the business owners. Was it last week, Peter? I think it was yeah. last week. 
Uh, so everyone had an opportunity to say something. And again, from the informal walking around in the business you know, community, um, the idea of having better visibility was pretty high in the list. <coughs> um, but before I show you the plans, I'd really invite Peter to give you his thoughts on, uh, on this. Peter? Hi, um, I'm Peter Sims. I own Sims Jewelers. Um, for some of you that don't know me, uh, I served as uh, chairman of the downtown steering committee for 18 years. Uh, that was a group that uh, was town committee, um, public sector, and business sector that helped with the renovation of the downtown uh, revitalization. It took us 18 years to get it done, but we finally did get it done. The spot that we're talking about now, actually in front of my store, um, our group was very aware of trees, and we wanted a lot of trees in the downtown. We traveled to many other towns, made recommendations on what types of trees to put in. Unfortunately, once it got to the state level, things got mixed up. The trees we have now were not the trees we wanted. We wanted taller trees, whisperier trees, not trees that would block signs. Any plan that was ever, um, that I ever saw in that area in front of my store in particular always had two trees in it. When the state got a hold of it and ended up doing the plans, three trees ended up there. My business in particular has been there for 56 years. Now when people call my store and say, where are you located? We used to always say a couple doors down from CVS, just look for us. Now we say a couple doors down from CVS, look for the wall of trees, we're behind it. <laughs> it's an issue. Um, it's directly affecting me. I know I talked to the gals at Good House, <coughs> so they weren't able to make it today. Um, it's an issue for them. I guess eventually the idea is for those trees to grow up high enough to be over the sides. Unfortunately, we might all be out of business by the time that happens. So I am definitely in favor of this. I don't mind seeing more seating. We're seeing a lot more foot traffic, thank goodness, now that the Charles Block has been done, people are walking up and down the street. It's not a bad thing to have people sitting out in front of my store in particular, I'll say I'm greedy, why not? Um, looking in my window, I don't mind. Um, and I think it's good for the town. Any other comment? Are we in the public uh, comment section of the public hearing? Yes, we are. Okay. I'd also invite the tree warden to speak. Yes. Mary Ellen, do you have some comments? Okay, thank you. Mary Ellen O'Neill, 125 Summer Avenue. Um, I went down and looked at it, and I can see where it does. They're, it, they're very lush trees. They're doing very well. Uh, I've talked to Mr. Keating, and it, the tree cannot be transplanted. Hmm. I think that they can definitely be trimmed back and create some more life for the businesses behind. But I also believe in time that these trees will grow higher and will, and so we just have to, you know, that's, that's the way it is with trees. And if you look at the, there's a couple of points with, you look at the island and you stand in front of it, so the tree that you want to cut down is in the front. So the street tree to the left is not doing very well. It has no water source. I'm, I'm over time, I'm not sure how well any of these trees will do. They have very limited access, root access to water. So we've created an area here that has a lot of access to water for the plants. And so that's why they're doing well down there. And they look so beautiful. And it's very stunning. There's a lot of benches there. I don't see a lot of people out there using the existing benches that we have. And if we cut it wide enough for people to walk through and sit on, we're cutting back plantings that are, that are doing well there. And we're cutting back the remaining land available to the other two trees to <coughs> receive water over time. I mean, I've had a tree that predated my um, living in this house. It was a beautiful sugar maple, which was planted in the wrong spot that wasn't friendly. It was just too trapped by concrete and asphalt, so it, it, it didn't survive. So I'm interested in these trees all surviving. We have a big tree issue in town, I think, where we're, we have not been funding our trees. We can't keep up, and we're falling behind. In addition to a lot of um, homeowners that are taking down many, many trees, the tree cover in my neighborhood in the last 15 years has been substantially reduced by, by loss and by, by deliberate cutting down. So I, I would just ask you to be you know, very careful about taking down a healthy tree and thinking about what we're, what we're losing, what we have, and some other options like trimming back some of the branches to allow more visibility until the trees grow up and, and, and take care of that problem. Thank you Thank for you. listening. Oh. 
Well, the, the trees, as was mentioned, are Zelkova, and that's a variety that uh, came to popularity and are, are planted as a lot of street trees in town because they survive very well. And they're very aggressive, but they also get very large. And uh, you're in a, a confined space there, uh, much better than the tree wells we have, which are very small. Um, but the tree will have a spread of 50 feet and a height of about 50 feet in maturity. So that center tree actually is already touching the other trees. Um, they were planted too close together uh, for maturity. It looked great six years ago. And, um, but that third tree is now touching the other trees. And um, you, I, I took a look at the distance between the two end trees their outer branches are drip line about 20 feet apart, and they're 36 feet on center. So um, I don't know how wide this uh, area is here, um, but certainly as the trees get larger, it'll make a nice canopy in there. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have planted this type of tree here because they are so large and aggressive. A more upright variety like the pears and <laughs> some of the elms and in uh, locusts we have there are more suited for streetscapes, but we have them and they're doing very well. I don't think taking out that one tree, which is smaller, um, is going to harm the other two trees. Uh, it's also going to keep that congestion that'll be there that has already started down. So although no one likes to lose trees as much as I do, uh, in this particular instance, they're too large a variety of tree to be planted in that location. So losing the one tree will uh, make the other two more visible and uh, I think will we'll serve the trees well. About two questions for me. Um, you said the drip line is 36 feet. Does that imply that as they grow larger, the, uh, that the uh, precipitation will actually be shaded? be uh, pushed away from the, from the ground. In other words, they'll eventually uh, prevent any mo natural moisture from entering the dirt. Is, is that the nature of the drip line's behavior? Well, the drip line's the very edge of the tree. So um, that's going to expand as the tree gets larger. Right now, at, at, in, the, in the future, 10, 15 years, that whole um, center area will be shaded. <clears throat> And, uh, but the tree will be able to be trimmed up high enough so that you'll be able to walk underneath and utilize it. Uh, the, the distance on center, the trees are 36 feet apart. Ideally, they should be about 50 feet apart. But the 36 feet isn't too bad, and you still have a 20-foot gap between the trees. Point being, there's room for the trees to grow and not be intertwined. The, uh, the one tree to be removed has already started to um, uh, mingle the branches, they're touching each other. Now, yes, they can be trimmed back, um, but uh, what you want to have happen is that the trees be trimmed up as they grow, and then you have a canopy above with plenty of visual space down below. Kevin? Um, isn't the, um, the issue with trees more about the roots um, being in contact with one another in, in comparison to how big they can grow and how healthy they can get? Well, they, the roots can get out quite a distance. Right. Uh, the uh, uh, school of thought has always, always been that the roots extend out to where, about where the drip line is. Okay. Okay, but they can also extend out considerably farther depending on barriers. The more barriers you create, the less root zone you have, and that's why street trees with little two-by-four wells don't do very well. They call them... Uh, street coffins because there's no place <laughs> for the tree to go. And the best thing the town did in this design was to plant the trees in these raised beds where there's no foot traffic, there's no compaction, and uh, you see how well these gardens have done in town. They're beautiful. The one in front of Town Hall, the one in front <coughs> of CVS. I mean, these are as good a streetscape uh, gardens and environments for trees and plant material grows you can have. Now, one of the issues um, that's being addressed is uh, there's a uh, uh, fire hydrant there, and I believe the water department has put a hook up there uh, to make watering much easier, so that there's a <coughs> supplemental water source there that 
wasn't there before and doesn't exist for the other trees. Um, they haven't done that yet. They almost did. Oh, okay. They said slow down. Um, this is the other thing I should mention. Um, I'll get to it when I show you the two uh, snapshots, but um, Brian Stowall um, is the fellow who's uh, adopted this island, if you will, and done a really nice job with it. And he had a lot of interest in making a change for what that's worth. And, and again, I'll get to his design um, quickly. Um, Brian's from Eastern Spring Landscape, and then uh, Laurie Johnson from Garden Rhythms is the woman who designed the entrance to the town hall that the Garden Club did a year ago, which came up very nicely. She has a little bit of a different concept. But more important, if you will, than just this, is we walked the whole area of the downtown, and they, between them and, and Jean Delios and I, um, have a concept of a master plan to tie all this together, but you have to start here. Um, and the rest of the work would probably begin next spring because it's really too late in the season to do too much in terms of planning. But a real key, as Bob mentioned, is have accessible water. Uh, we do have water that's for four or five hundred bucks available at that spot very easily and very securely. So you can't just go taking it if you want to. Um, why that wasn't done in the past, I don't know, but it's not hard. As it is right now, Brian has to bring all the water from his house in order to water that area. Wow. So you can just imagine the effort that that involves, um, you know, in his pickup truck. truck. Yeah, well, yeah, fire <laughs> truck. Um, so, you know, as we walked around and really thought about some of the areas, until you're on your feet only looking for this reason, you miss a lot of the details around here. Um, the downtown is, no question, is beautiful. In some cases, it's because there's some really nice gardens, and in this area especially. But down there, there's not a lot of tie-in and theme. If you think of the little strip parking lot in front of Christopher's, for instance, is some dead space. Mm -hmm. The intersection of um, Haven and Main, which is now our two main streets, really needs to be improved. Some of it's landscaping, maybe some of it's an arch or some kind of indication that, hey, Haven Street should be a destination. But just so you know, this is part of a larger discussion that you're going to hear more about over the winter leading into the spring. This is just the beginning. Uh, and this just seemed like a standalone project that regardless if anything else did or didn't happen, this can still happen and have a kind of a I would think too that it's still somewhat in the design phase. So anytime you remove, um, you add hardscape into that center, it's going to affect the two remaining trees to a degree. So I would think, you know, all working together, there's a compromise that can be made. But it, uh, you're taking root zone away in one area, but then you're adding it uh, maybe in, a, in the front part where that other tree was. Uh, so, so let me show you the two plans. This is Brian's, Brian Stowall. His idea was just to cut a straight shot where the tree is now, which is approximately the, where that word benches is, and put long benches on either side. Um, so that's one idea. Um, and the benches are ADA compliant. Bill's still back there. So we won't have any issues with that. Um, and this is one idea that maximizes, if you will, the amount of plant growth space still and minimizes, if you will, the stuff in the center. Um, the other one that um, uh, Lori came up with is to more arc it. Um, and right now, there are existing benches, for instance, right here, and there's concrete um, around the side. So we can reuse a lot of the concrete that would be moved at each end and have insets on each side. So that it'd be very similar to the other idea, but it actually gets you a lot more seating. Um, and the key, which is yet to be determined, and Bob will be a, a key person in this, is how much distance should we stay away from each end tree in order to give it the best chance for survival? We don't want to mess with those trees. Uh, it's nice to have seeds here, but the main thing is keep those two trees doing their job, which is blocking part of Peter's store. <laughs> so you wouldn't want to lose that entirely. We can install a window, Peter. <laughs> um, so those are the two uh, roughly framed uh, drawings, if you will. And, and first, of all, I really appreciate the fact that, you know, two volunteers spent a good amount of time walking around with us and doing this all on their own. It was really terrific. Um, they had some good ideas. Um, you know, where we go from here, we have uh, $7,800 left over from the downtown project. Um, we'll need to spend it within a reasonable amount of time or just give it back. And when I say give it back, put it to another debt issue because it was our money. Um, so to me, this again seemed like a pretty good use of that money. It's, it's related to downtown. And I don't know, I don't have the background Peter does, 
uh, or maybe Bob does in terms of how we designed it and how the state built it, but you know not everything the way we designed it was built. And just look at the pollards. So what I'm not sure is that we would have built it with three trees exactly at sign height as being the ideal uh, place. How many more years is it going to be before you can see his signs? <laughs> Another 20 it, years? Well, that's a fast, but those trees have doubled in size in, in six years. So, okay. you know, you've got a, that time anyway. They, they weren't, as I said, the tree that I would pick for that location, yep. but we had no say in the matter. <laughs> and uh, most of the rest of the trees uh, came out fine. Um, so it's going to take a little time. If you look at them, they've been pruned up and up and up, and every year they get pruned up a little more. We do our best to work with the uh, businesses, um, especially with his older trees that have gotten to that height. We, we did some trimming down by the hitching post <laughs> yep. uh, there in that area and also in front of some of the trees um, uh, that were lodged right up against the uh, buildings there where uh, Demichi's just opened um, to open it up to a point when these trees were high enough to be able to do that without uh, hurting them aesthetically. So the trouble with new trees is they're new trees and they're, they're, uh, they need to grow. I think it's the advantage in that location is that they have a lot of soil and uh, they're a bit pampered compared to the other street trees and will grow faster. As you drive around, it's interesting that in Reading, for some reason on Maine and Haven, we plant trees right in front of store, front store doors. Yeah. If you drive on other downtowns, it's always between the two stores where they join. Oh. It's kind of an interesting <laughs> philosophy. It's like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I, had, well, I had a question for you. I, my own personal experience, having owned homes and many trees for the course of a long time, um, I, I'm wondering if, you know, it sounds like you wouldn't have put three here uh, to begin with. Not that variety. Particularly no. this variety. I yeah. know in the case of my own situation, I've had once some thinning went on that trees thrived yeah. as compared with you know, when they weren't being thin, they all seem to be, you know, struggling. I mean, is that potentially something that could happen here anyway? Well, once they, the, the third tree is intertwining now, so unless you try to make shrubs out of them or topiary, you're going to run into this problem of, uh, of them being planted too close together. These are not trees that are, are meant to be uh, in this type of planting. You really want a, what they call a columnar or an upright variety. Um, that uh, stay within themselves and grow tall and grow tall quickly. Yeah. Um, the locust tree is not the most attractive, but it's thin, it grows tall. You see them uh, in many of these downtown plantings where um, within a few years you can trim them up to the roofs of buildings. Um, this is a, is a thick, aggressive tree that, uh, as far as a street tree, makes a great tree because of that uh, survivability, but in a, in a downtown confined space, um, it has its limitations. For instance, on both corners of Woburn Street, there's a culvert on both corners. Okay, they, they've got a big bump out. They can grow, they can, they can do very well um, as specimen trees. But in a cluster planting, you'd really have want, um, if you look at some of the other trees along the front of CVS, you have pear trees uh, not the old Bradford that go this way, but the Shanti Clairs that go up. And uh, it gives you a nice shape, it gives you color, and they stay, you know, tight. Uh, you could have done three trees that way. Um, but these, these are as close as you'd ever want to see them planted. Um, and they're manageable, but they'll need to be pruned and pruned and pruned. I mean, the nice thing is you look at the size of the trees now, uh, and compared to, we have elm trees doing downtown uh, uh, that are doing very well. Um, it's nice to see them come back. Um, uh, but these are just a, a big, aggressive tree. Uh, a lot of times in the downtown, for instance, the, uh, the corner where the Atlantic is, those, the uh, maple trees there that are, are in um, granite raised planters, nice way to go that way because they're very protected. The original specification called for a variety that spread out 50 feet, and they were 10 feet away from the building. So we changed, we were able, because it was a town project, to change the tree to a variety that grows upright. And if you look at those trees in the corner, they're attractive trees, they'll have nice fall color, but they're not going to interfere with anyone. So it's the right tree in the right place.
Yeah. And you know, as you'd say to a, a homeowner, uh, if we're going to take a tree down, we'll put up two or three, and the discretion is really up to Bob with some of that money in the downtown area, hopefully. Good, good. I saw a hand in the public comment. Yes, uh, Marilyn Simmons, uh, Pine Ridge Road. As a member of the Arbor Day Foundation, I keep staring at this uh, sign, 25 years, Tree City, US, USA. I came here not really knowing too much about this. I just heard about it today. And I know underneath there is one of the Adopt an Island uh, volunteers. And I know how much goes into your own uh, money and time and water. And I didn't know he is part of your design team. And I was kind of going to defend, are you going to go in there and destroy <laughs> what he's made just for a few minutes? <laughs> <laughs> but he's part of the design team, so I can't go to that room. But I do think it took how many years for that tree to get to that size? And we're just going to go chop it down for a few benches? That's how, I, how I'm seeing that. And, if, and I can be wholly, to totally wrong. And I will, I have to leave because I'm supposed to be someplace else. <laughs> I will listen to see on television, I, I don't know if it's being broadcast or not, to see what you all decide. But as a member of Arbor Day Foundation, I plant little sticks. I remember my, I'm digressing, my kids were given in the fifth grade trees. And because of the nature of the trees on my street, they're all very old and we're all losing them. The only tree I have in my yard now is the tree my daughter planted from the Arbor Day Foundation, fifth grade, a, a spruce, blue spruce. The rest all had to be cut, not because I wanted to. They were dead, dying. So I guess I'm plugging for the tree. <laughs> you, you find a bench someplace else. <laughs> That's very good. Fine. Thank you for your comments. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just want to get a sense of uh, all the businesses that have weighed in here. We've heard from some jewelers that are in favor of the project. We have a letter from Goodhart's Children's Shop right. advocating for the project. Uh, from uh, Jeff Struble of Struble Engineering at 603 Main, uh, giving some very eloquent uh, arguments against it. And uh, let's see, the, uh, the I don't know if the Donnelly Moran family represents any businesses there or for just residents uh, that they've weighed in, uh, I think, against it. So do we have any other responses from any of the other? Um, the four businesses in the immediate area, Peter being one of them, were yeah. in favor. Okay. Not all could be here, not all Did they others. contact you and express that? I walked down there and asked them. Okay. I saw one more hand out. Gina? Yes, Gina Snyder. I'm here to advocate for the tree. However, I can think I can see how this is going. I will say that Jeff Struble was extremely articulate mm -hmm. in the letter to the editor that he wrote, can say it far better than I could. Mm -hmm. However, if you are going to go ahead and do something like this, number one, I would like to see the mitigation that mm -hmm. Bob mentioned. Sometimes when people ask for this, mm -hmm. they volunteer to replace three for one. So it would be nice if the people who asked for this to be done would, would do that. Um, and also, considering what um, Bob had said about the, um, the drip line and the need for water and that these trees are doing so well because they can access water, I would really like to see horse pavers well installed and properly maintained so that while you may have pavement in that area, it's porous and those roots will be able to get the moisture. Plus, it's a great example of green infrastructure and the way things are going for stormwater mitigation if you were to put that in. Thank you, Gina. Any other comments from the uh, folks here tonight or from the board? Yeah, we can uh, move to close the meeting. Uh, <laughs> Move the Board of Selectmen uh, close the hearing on removal of the tree at 64660 Bain Street. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Oh, I see seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor? 5-0. And we'll move that the Board of Selectmen approve the removal of one six-inch diameter Zeltova tree located in front of 64660 Main Street. Do I have a second? Second. Kevin seconds. Any discussion? Hmm. All those in favor? Well, well I, I came in here uh, thinking I was opposed to this, um, but having listened to the tree warden, I know firsthand the tree warden is the biggest champion <coughs> 
trees in this town and will oppose the uh, any plan to remove a tree that's not well thought out. Uh, I think he made some good points about the, the health of the other two trees, the coverage and the long-term situation, and, and that sort of swayed my vote to mm -hmm. support this, mm -hmm. notwithstanding the great arguments the other folks have made tonight. I agree. I mean, I think it's a it's a tough decision to cut yeah. down a tree that's perfectly right. healthy. It really is. Now, if we've got three healthy trees though, that are in a very small space, and they're blocking all the businesses in our primary business district, and we have an opportunity to plant some trees elsewhere to mitigate that, that you know, I it, I think it's a hard decision. <coughs> but and I, I hope Gina's comments on porous pavers and and the other points she made were are taken into account mm -hmm. that when we go forward here. Yeah. I, I actually, um, I wasn't, I kind of didn't make a conclusion before I came in. You know, sometimes there's overwhelming information on a topic and you, and you feel like you know what you want to do. But I kind of came here want, wanting to hear what everybody had to say. Um, it strikes me that a couple of things are true. Um, the the renovation of the downtown business district was designed for beauty, usability, and the attraction and sustenance of business. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like we, we might have got a little overzealous, not through any fault of our own, um, with this third tree, um, and the idea that um, we can mitigate the loss of this tree with several others. We've apparently got some funding that we should you know, prudently spend to finish the project and then, you know, um, replace, if we can replace three to one and do it in the downtown area, based on the direction, mm -hmm. you know, of Bob Keating, we start to put the right thing in the right place. I, you know, to me that, that really matters. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that, you know, negatively impacting what businesses, whether they're new or whether they've been here a long time is, is not a good thing for us to do. I mean, we need to encourage and support all of our small businesses. And part of the way that I think we do that is by having, I mean, I personally like to wander around down there. Mm -hmm. The idea of being able to sit down and talk to somebody, you run into somebody, and, and, it, and I think it creates commerce. And, and so it's not about picking a tree over people. It's about, you know, the natural coexistence in a business area of, of all of those, you know, component parts, I do think that um, the 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 idea about the, uh, the porous pavers is a really good one, and I think the idea of a three for one is also mm -hmm. an extremely good one. And mm -hmm. I like that um, we would have Bob at the switch of that instead of uh, a state authority that was telling us how to do our own business here. I, I always kind of bristle <laughs> when that happens, but. I guess if you're spending somebody else's money, you've got to tolerate what they do. But at the end of the day, uh, it doesn't mean you can't make it right. Uh, and so I, I'm kind of coming down on that spot. It's not, it isn't an easy decision, but I think I am coming down in that direction. Yeah, just speaking for myself, just to echo, I think, John's point. I think the best of intentions sometimes turn out differently than we expect. And uh, I'm by no stretch an expert on trees, but to the extent that the three represents uh, too much greenery for that space and impairs the overall uh, health of that island. We do need to give ourselves the latitude of s occasionally sitting back and saying the intention of the this <coughs> wasn't met, we have a chance to make good on it. And occasionally that'll mean that some of the plans that we undertook at first need to be undone. And in this case, we have a means to, um, I guess make lemonade out of the lemons. We'll end up with more seating, we'll end up with pervious pav pavers, and hopefully better use overall um, well, better the property. Water source too. Yeah. Kevin, any closing comments? Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I'd probably echo what John uh, also had said as well. I just had one real quick question in reference to that three to one, uh, Bob. This would be something that you can go out and you can specify the tree, right tree for the right area, so it's not like we're putting something in like like we've done here, and we're gonna have to take it out right, a period of time later. Right, we plant trees um, in the downtown areas, replacements. We we plant them parks, uh, schools, okay. uh, all the you know streets in town. So we try and pick. Well, we do. We pick the right tree for the right area. Okay. Based on uh, and the in the downtown project, 
one of the things you get with landscape architects, and I review all the uh, plans um, under the DRT for landscaping, <coughs> is they tend to build out a project from beginning. So they stuff it with plant material. It, it's, it's meant to look good on opening day, but they don't plan for the future. Right. And uh, we could run into this in the new yeah, school projects yeah, and, yeah. and whatever. And we've taken a lot of material out that, that is not for future. In the, state, in, um, in the state plan, we had no input there. So when that island was done, you had three trees, it looked finished. You know, six, seven years later, now you're, you know, you're dealing with plant material that's, that's too large right. for a space, or could be considered too large. So, I mean, this is just what John said. You're writing something that was overbuilt at the time. And people have added material and done a great job. These islands are beautiful in town. Um, but sometimes you have to step back and say, you can only prune so much. And you, you, you take a little out for the future. Okay. And would we have area if we, if we so wanted to have them all in the downtown area? Because I definitely agree we don't have enough trees uh, in downtown. I know it's also tough because well, of the nature of it. Well, now you take out concrete and side Yeah. That's, that's, that's another exactly. issue. Okay. Uh, it, it depends. We. Under the renovation of the downtown, they make very, as you know, very narrow sidewalks. Right. Yeah. And when many of the trees were planted, they were literally up against canopies coming out from the buildings. Mm -hmm. So instead of, you know, there was the, it was the decision not to go out more, which would have been healthier for the trees, but to come in more. So we have, we have um, very small tree wells. And the average um, health span, if you, you uh, the National Forest Service will tell you, in their literature, a street tree may last anywhere from five to seven years mm -hmm. because they just don't have room to grow. Ours are past that and are doing well, but we keep them watered and, and we do some fertilizing and occasionally we lose one, but for the most part they're all doing pretty well. Our tree wells on, on, along in the front of CVS and the businesses are two by four feet wide. That's really, really small. Uh, <coughs> if you're in downtown Boston, and they're wide sidewalks, they can be 10 by 10s. And uh, I live in the town of Canton, which did their downtown. They went over, the state did it. They went to a wider sidewalk. And most of their um, uh, tree wells are 6 by 8. So it just depends on which design, which way you want to go. So uh, we have filled all the wells in the past that were trees were removed, and there was no money in the budgets at the time to replace them. Um, they all have tree well, trees in them now, um, but it's, it's a challenge to keep them alive. Okay. Thank you. Any other comment? Uh, let's see, that was discussion. Um, all those in favor of the motion to um, remove the six inch tree, raise your hand. Five zero. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Uh, next on our agenda is a dis is a discussion uh, regards the Human Relations Advisory Committee regards some graffiti that was uh, noted in the town. Please. Hi, Camille. Good evening. See you, we've seen you in action before. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a little too comfortable in the room, right? <laughs> here tonight. Um, so Keung Liu Yu, um, he cannot be here tonight, and also Monique Ganarana Mon cannot be here tonight. 
and um, I can't Osani. say his name. Okay. Uh, he's the pastor of the oh, uh, Korean Keong. Church. Yeah. 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 Hey, I'm going to get it. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> thanks. And um, the reason we're in here is because we're in a quandary. Um, we had an incident which Christine is going to describe and we became aware of and held a meeting in June to talk about it. And as we delved into this whole issue, we became very confused as to what our role as the HRAC really is, and especially in incidences like this. So first we should start with Christine. Um, over the last several months, starting in the winter, there were a series of incidents um, within our community. Um, best terminology is offensive graffiti, um, symbols of hatred, etc., were scrawled or written in public places um, within our community. Some of these incidents were reported to the police department, some were not, um, some were reported in that area, etc. Uh, what then transpired was there was an effort to remove those symbols and graffiti um, that was somewhat successful <coughs> but not entirely successful um, and then becoming aware of that bringing it to the attention of the HRAC and to the Board of Selectmen as well. And um, it was interesting how we heard about it is that Christine you first you didn't there was an incident in a public bathroom mm -hmm. with uh, the swastika. And you then, <coughs> as, a, as a resident of Rennie, didn't know where to go. No, I did not. Um, and actually took some direction from our CASA, um, who then put me in touch with <coughs> now Deputy Chief Sagala <coughs> and with uh, Chief Cormier, and then on to the Human Relations Advisory Commission. And just to clarify, when the incident took place, it was never directly reported to the police department. It mm -hmm. happened, uh, actually we heard about it from Christine, and by the time we heard about it, it had been erased in the bathroom. At right. Okay. Linda, do you wish to say anything? Um, She's well, speechless. I, I can't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, just that um, I think it's important that we clarify when something happens how we can move in a timely way to respond, both in proactive ways and in reactive ways. Um, part of what we've discussed is educating the public about what happens if you do see something. What should you do first? And I think you have a copy of a draft of a press release that we'd like to publish in the newspapers that talks about this incident, but more so directs people to, um, to go to the police first, what they should do. So Christine didn't know what she should do, and we'd like people to know that if they see something, this is what they should do, this is who they should go to. They are absolutely not alone. This is all of our homes, and none of us will stand for hate being a part of our home. So it would be great to clarify for our community what they should do when they see something like this. Um, did you want to say more? Well, if you want to, sure, you're yeah. um, And so part of the question that we're asking you is, we're an advisory committee for you. Um, so where does our initiative start and stop, and where does, what, um, what responsibility and what liberties can we take when something is reported like this? Do we bring the press release to you first and wait for another meeting? There's time involved in that. Or do we have your blessing, I don't know if I'm saying this right, to move ahead and re respond to an event like this in both reactive and proactive ways? Can I ask you a couple of backup, just to rewind a little bit? I thought I heard moments ago this was, um, there were more than one instance of this. Is that, is that accurate? Some of the, no. the, the one particular incident was um, the swastika, as Linda referred to it, a, a symbol of hatred and that. And there have been other incidents following that. 
Were there repetitions of that or some other? No, not particularly repetitions of that symbol, but other things. And so the facility in question, <coughs> or the facilities, where were these sorts of things scrolled? Um, it just generally in the downtown business area. I see. Thank you. So that was a public bathroom? Yeah. Yes. And one of, and you can speak to this, Mark. One of the problems is uh, security cameras. Well, right. Thirty Haven Street does not have in the, uh, in the in the area where the bathrooms are any type of security cameras. Not they wouldn't be in the bathrooms, but outside the area at all, in that hallway at all, down there at all. So there's no really way of, for us to tell. There was no investigation to be able to be conducted once once the uh, sure. thing was cleaned up. And again, to clarify, none of these were reported. In, just mm -hmm. from Christine is all we're hearing about from any mm -hmm. type of uh, incidents down at 30 Haven Street. Do we have a generalized uh, graffiti problem that you described this as being part of, or is this unique? I, I, I don't think so. I think this is more directed at, at what, what she's talking about, one other incident, but talk, it might have been a one specific person down there right. who's mm -hmm. since moved. Yes. Uh, so I don't think there's anything else going on that we can see. This was happened, the incident with the squats that goes back several months ago at this point, and we've had right. nothing else come up at all. That we're aware of. Right. So if I summarize it, at least what I'm hearing is if the Human Relations Committee would like to know what they should do and how they should do it. Okay. Rob? And if I just might point out on 5C, 1, 2, and 3, it's a nice packet, <coughs> or in your weekend packet at least, as the uh, draft press release of the uh, 5C2 and 5C3 especially. Comments from, I'm sorry, any other comments from the relations? No, I, I think you said it correctly, <coughs> succinctly. And actually add a caveat to that it's, we do have ideas of what we'd like to do, we'd sort of like permission to do them. Right? Any other I comments? mean, we have ideas about, about the how to rate? respond, um, but we don't want to go beyond our purview. When we report to you, we want to make sure that that's your vision of what we do as well. Any other questions from the board? Comments? No? So I also just want to, sorry, John, remind the board and that there's, a, there's an important line here. If it's a hate crime, that's a legal issue. Correct. Mm -hmm. This group may have its own feelings and views, but that aside, that's a legal issue that police should be involved with mm -hmm. and would have been right away if it had been reported as such. Mm -hmm. Would this have met the risen to the level of a hate crime if if the material were preserved in its intact form in and of itself? Oh, no, it would have to be directed towards An someone. Individual, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, in, at that point, no, it would have been a vandalism, but that would have been unless we have directed it towards someone. No. Yeah. Uh, with, with, this, with the determination of a hate crime, it also depend on what was in the head of the person that did this. In other words. If this were just some high school kid doing a pranky thing because it's cool to write right. swastika. They have no idea of the history. Do you, that's why I think it's Again, important to involve the police. It would have to be directed towards yeah. a certain per, a individual okay. or, or, a, or a, 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 a group of individuals. You know, so I, if it wasn't directed towards anyone who was a high school kid, would you mm -hmm. could have been? No, yeah. it would not be a hate crime. It would okay. be a vandalism. Uh, that's why I think it's very important to make the point you did in your release here. Call the police. Get them in as the first mm -hmm. step. So I can then See, figure I, out. Yeah, I kind of think that's the overriding mm -hmm. thing that is really important. The fact that Marcus Party Committee just kind of lends itself to that. And mm -hmm. um, the only thing that concerns me, you know, in, in reading the press release is when you give um, symbols of hate airtime, no. yeah. then you've yeah. given them yeah. airtime. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you know, in a press release that actually mentions what happened exactly, it's kind of the thing that bothers me about that is it it it, only, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I'm thrilled that you that you folks are you know taking such a serious interest in trying to deal with this. Um, I don't want to create fodder for you know for people to go. Oh, that bothers them. Well, let me go. Let me go do that, if, you know, because there are people in this world that mm -hmm. if they feel like they have a good way to get your goat, they're going to get your goat because uh, that's what they do. The idea of, you know, almost everything else except identifying, you know, uh, I, you know, I think identifying the exact situation. When you do that, I, think <coughs> you're, I just think you're opening the door, 
you know, it's kind of like some of these terrorists that we see on television. There's yeah. only so much airtime they're going to get on what they're doing, you know, because otherwise it gets, it's like fuel for the fire. The idea of talking about conceptually what you guys talk about in that press release is excellent. Yeah. The idea of directing them to the police, I think, is really important. The idea that now suddenly being public with the fact in a more clear way that there's a committee that's glad to hear from you is also really good. So I think all of that's good. The only thing that I'm suggesting about the press release is I'd just be a little careful about, you know, how much specific, specific, specific. specific. Yeah, okay, yeah, like that. I, I <laughs> usually can say that for some reason tonight I can't. But um, that's, you know, that's my only comment. John, are you suggesting that we take out what the incident was and just talk about yeah, that just there have been incidents, and they, and or, they or describe have, it generically. I yeah, I think just to yeah. just to not give some. This was a this was an ignorant person that committed this act. There are other ignorant people around, and you know sometimes if you give them a little a little nudge, you know, in the press, mm -hmm. it's going oh yeah well, they got famous. If that bothers them, fine. The Fifteen mm -hmm. minutes of fame. Uh, so. So, so one other thing I notice in here. You had mentioned that um, that when that it has to be directed at a person to be a hate crime, and that doesn't seem to be what it says in this press release. So I don't think we want to have a press release that doesn't that says something different than what the law really intends. I do think it, it's a really good idea to have. I, I love the I idea of, the com of of saying, you know, as a community, we're strongly opposed to, you know, anything that that's prejudicial and you know. We take a strong stand. We want to make sure everyone knows what you should do. You know, that kind of thing. The yeah. fact that nobody knew, maybe nobody thought that to call the police, but now <laughs> you make it clear yeah. that that's yeah. a, mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. it rises to that. Because it does. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I totally agree with you. I, I love the idea of making clear what your committee does. I, I yeah. think the idea that we have an intolerance to intolerance, mm -hmm. you know, in this mm -hmm. town is all really very important. I just kind of dress it down a little on this yeah. one. And having to know that they can come to you is, is a great thing, too, yeah. right? His, history is full of uh, offensive things been, been being written in bathrooms from about the moment after bathrooms were invented. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm struggling with both the medium and the message. The, uh, if this were ordinary graffiti, this would be a vandalism issue. Mm -hmm. This particular symbology, I, I, get the, uh, I get the hidden message. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's a singular event. and what the group might focus on is uh, evaluating whether this is systemic. Is there, a, is there an individual, a group of individuals doing it? In which That's case, yeah. mm -hmm. then you've got a fact pattern that you can act on. This seems like it's a singular event, maybe even a single individual. To John's point, you breathe oxygen into the argument, and all you're doing is letting the ne next crank out there, maybe I'll get my 15 minutes of fame, and, uh, mm -hmm. and irritate one member of the Human Relations Committee. I think it's fine to speak about tolerance issues in general, this sounds like it's a one of a kind, and not to dismiss it, I might just say, I'll you know, keep my powder dry for the next one. Naturally, turn it over to the police to the extent that this is part of a fact that fits into a larger mosaic, but it, it doesn't appear to have much been described here tonight. Um, in terms of how you do it, we've talked about what to do. The how you do it, I think it's fine to have a press release and speak to the, the bigger issues about neighborliness and uh, tolerance and um, what it means to be a running citizen. I actually need to play devil's advocate a little bit because around the same time there were incidents in Bedford and Belmont that anti-Semitism is not something that is quiet. Um, there's intolerance that's general, but there can also be a denial that it happens in my backyard. And that's not healthy for a community. And so if we do not give, if we just talk generically every time there's an incident or an incident that doesn't get reported to the police, then there's another message that we're giving to the people that saw that message. There are people that went to those establishments that live in that area who don't feel safe anymore because there was hate in their backyard. and. Whether or not it's deemed, decide, because it didn't go to the police, we can't decide whether it was aimed at specific people or not. 
But that doesn't change the fact that it did impact specific people, and it impacts the you whole You know, Linda, community. I think that there's not a thing in the world wrong with being very specific about, you know, there having been anti-Semitic behavior, yeah. thoughts. I don't, mm -hmm. all I'm, my only suggestion to you was not, to not be specific about, about the, symbol. the problem. Yeah. I don't want to give them an easel. You know, I, that's the, I mean, that's my only thought, and I, I don't claim to be right about that. Um, I'm just putting it out there because there are a lot of cranks, and you know, um, sometimes, I mean, I know that um, there's a lot of, you know, I'm, as you all know, I'm down at a baseball field, you know, half my life, and you know, the one here in town, um, you know, there's a lot of equipment down there, storage equipment down there that gets tagged all the time. You know, um, and it has never been tagged in the way that you're talking about. It's been more of a vandalism type of tag, and um, we have we have been diligent in you know in in repainting, and so after a while you wear them down, um, and it's like it's more trouble than it's worth for them. We don't give them you know we the the, the kind of the messages they're giving are more kid messages, I'm in charge kind of thing. That they aren't the kind of thing you're talking about. I, and I'm not suggesting that I know the right answer to this. I'm just saying I think it's highly appropriate to be specific. Give some thought to, you know, how much, you know, how much of an easel you want to create for the next crank. That's all. And if, if this, you'd be surprised the reaction I think of this board if you did have an event of the sort you're describing, Linda, if it was a systemic act that was in public on buildings like the sort in Belmont, I think you'd get, you'd be very, um, you'd have a particular response out of this board. I, I, I can only speak for myself, but I would be out of my chair around that if that yeah. was, you know, something that was going on in a systemic way. I mean, I know in Bedford, they did have some, it was like everywhere. It was a real problem. And I don't know exactly how they solved it. And I don't know if you guys have done any research with how that little community has, you know, because I haven't heard it again, but there was something, there was stuff going on there that was, you know, it was inappropriate and hateful and all of those kinds of things. I, I love the fact that you were here having a discussion about it, that this committee, you know, thought enough of, you know, the, the board that kind of empowers them to do their job to come back and have a visit uh, and see what goes on. So I, I'm not trying to suggest I have absolutely the right answer. I'm just offering a little a little feedback. I, you know, and I don't know, do, I mean, do we need to create a policy of some kind? I think the group's only looking for uh, approval of the press releases written or suggested amendments. Yeah? Yes. Actually, I would go, we're asking actually for, um, this is one incident, there might be others. Mm -hmm. This incident has taken a very long time to respond to, which is not the best, I'll speak for myself, I think it's way too long that this has taken to respond to this incident and to get proactive information out there and reactive information out there. And so part of what I'm wondering, and I thought the committee's question was, is that if something like this happens, do we need to go through a process, what is the process we need to go through to respond to respond to it publicly. Is it just through our officer? Or do we need, because we're your advisory board, do we need to come to you for you to vote on our response? No. I, I think job one is get the data, get the facts, you know, get the, uh, preserve the environment so that you've got, uh, you can draw as much data out, evidence out of the circumstance as you can. Your right time is not your friend, but I assume an investigation of this sort doesn't necessarily take a long time. Maybe it's part of a large large so why did it take so long? Yeah, why? This happened yeah, months ago, right? Over the building blocks of the delay. Is that the first <laughs> time I heard about this? Can we make those, get those out of the way? I interviewed you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hang on, that, that's yeah. got to roll I'm part of the impediment. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember exactly when I learned about this, but I'll say it was early July. You met in June, so it was after your June meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I asked for the HRAC to do was to come in and see the selectmen, but to invite me to their next meeting, which just so happened to be August. And then this is your next right. meeting. So in terms of their next meeting and your next meeting, this is the fastest it could happen. And, and we had a, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. We had a delay in, in uh, May. I think probably I talked to you. It was around town April. Yeah. 
and there just wasn't a quorum. We tried to meet uh, two or three times, and we didn't have a quorum. So we kept pushing Christine off before she could get in. It was June before she got in. So that that's what it is. Well, I think I think what what the board, what our committee needs to know is that the process will be that we run it through. Uh, through the police department and work with the police department yep. mm -hmm. and um, see if there's outreach that needs to be done, et cetera. And I assume that's what you're thinking. Well, yeah, my suggestion um, would be along Camille's lines is that you know, the police are the liaison for this group. Um, I fully trust whatever judgment they make. And I certainly don't think we need to have them in here to see you at any no, other no. instance. I, yes, but where this was the first one, yeah. sure. it yeah. seemed like a reasonable discussion. Yeah. Time is of the essence. Yeah. And, and, and just to make another comment on the press release, I, I really emphasize the text the tip part. Because um, I think yeah. you know, that, yeah. that really is, should be a tip of your sword uh, mm -hmm. kind of thing for getting the information to the police in a really timely manner. They can come out and do an investigation on it. Um, I know that they they kind of had a huge success with that. Uh, Absolutely, with the text and tip program. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure it's anonymous as well, too. It correct? Is. Mm -hmm. So you know, people don't have to feel like they're putting their name in the middle of it, but they can get it right out there right away. Um, so I I I'd almost really highlight that little section when you do put out the release. Um, one other thing, the mission for this committee is is not the mission we um, use anymore. <laughs> so I don't know if you'd like to know what, <laughs> what our mission is. Bob, did they get a copy of the mission? Um, I had this brochure, but you were going to send me a completed and, one. And we forgot. you haven't yet. <laughs> I'm not we sure what it is. Our, we lost a member because um, <clears throat> she had twins. And she had, at her work, she had the template. And oh, uh, we're having a difficult you're going to have Dropbox so, now, Rex. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get you a copy of our new yeah. mission. I, I don't think you're going to have any trouble with it, right. but just yeah, so we, that we you can know. That memorialize it in your Yeah, mission. it would yep. be good. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Yeah, thank oh, you just much. one other yeah. thing. Jackie, did you want to say anything? No, wasn't the mission included in our press release? It is in the press okay. release. So. so then we should have so a new one. So we've got that. Um, it's on the last section. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, first paragraph. The first paragraph under the label Human Relations Advisory. Oh, there's a typo. <laughs> advisory Committee. Um, which promote? Do you would you like I'll to? Try. Sure. Um, the Human Relations Advisory Council is an advisory group for the Reading Board of Selectmen, which promotes and encourages respect for the human and civil rights of the entire Reading community. HRAC sponsors outreach efforts and educational programs to foster a greater understanding and appreciation for diversity. The committee works to prevent prejudice and discrimination on the basis of color, age, gender, religion, disability, culture, natural origin, ancestry, or sexual orientation. HRAC is a safe place where individuals or groups may plan opportunities for intercultural interactions or share concerns. To ensure that Reading is a welcoming and vibrant community, the HRAC celebrates each individual's unique qualities. That's the newest version of mm -hmm. the mission. Sounds good. Sounds, Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Okay, we just have one announcement that yep. is uh, for uh, Town Day. This is Reverend. Rushton. Janet Smith Rushton. Hi, everybody. I'm the pastor at Old South United Methodist Church, your closest neighbor, <coughs> and want you to know that on Sunday, while uh, town, the Reading Town Fair Day was going on, um, we would like to invite concerned citizens to join us in standing for peace, justice for our neighbors near and far. We're doing a shoe collection so people can stand with us mm -hmm. for peace and other different kinds of actions, but much has been happening here, there, and everywhere, and so it's an attempt to invite people into uh, something we can all stand united for. So, noon to four. A shoe collection? A shoe collection. A shoe collection. Yes, a collection of shoes. I suggest old ones you don't need. People are bringing them from noon to four on our front lawn, 
as a way of standing in solidarity with people here, near, and everywhere working for peace and justice and tolerance for all people. So as a representation of the solidarity. Yes. So, so we stand, stand together for peace. Yes. We'll have things for children. They can uh, trace their footprints and do chalk drawings and things like that. But Thank you. Thanks, guys. Anybody Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure thing. Okay. <clears throat> Please take notice that the Board of Selectmen is the licensing authority for the Town of Reading. We'll hold a public hearing on Tuesday, September 2nd at 8.30 p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, to show cause why Jay and Ricky Incorporated doing business as Ricky's Liquor, retail package store licensed to expose, keep for sale, and to sell all kinds of alcoholic beverages should not be modified, suspended, or revoked for violating GL Chapter 138, Section 34 on August 3, 2014, to wit, the sale or delivery of alcoholic beverages to a person under 21 years of age. All interested parties may appear in person, may submit their comments in writing, or may email comments to town-manager at ci.reading.ma.us. Thank you, Dan. Chief? Chief? Person. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Sergeant Christine Amendola and Good Officer evening. Laura Bullis. These are the officers that were involved in the situation uh, that occurred um, a few weeks ago. So Officer Bullis can relay to you the facts of how she initiated uh, the incident that occurred and then Sergeant Amendola can tell you about any follow-up that occurred. Okay. So just a basic story. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, okay, so on, on August 3rd, uh, I was working the C shift, so the 4 to midnight shift, and I was in the area specifically of Ricky's Liquor due to the, uh, the recent events that had taken place there earlier, um, followed up, I believe, by Detective McHugh over here with you guys. I was in the area, I was actually in the parking lot, and I saw um, a youth come out, of the, come out of Ricky's Liquor holding just a bottle of Jaeger in his hand. Um, and I said, oh, what are you drinking tonight? I had, the, I had my windows down in the, in the patrol car. And he said, Jaeger. And he was getting into the, the passenger seat of the vehicle. And I said, oh, okay. I said, how old are you? And he said, 21. And I said, oh, do you have any ID on you? And he said, no, I don't. So immediately I was like, well, that's not good. Um, so I said to him, well, when's your birthday? And he said, July 20th. And I said, oh, of what year? And he said, uh, 92? And I, so, so I pulled up my car right next to um, the vehicle. There was the individual that I was speaking with was the passenger in the front seat. There was a driver, and then there was three passengers in the back seat. None of them, to me, looked anywhere near 21. Um, so I, I pulled up next to him, and I said, I said, what's your name? And I started to type in his name into the computer system in our cars. And I said, what's your birthday? And then he said, OK, I, I just turned 17. So he had just turned 17, um, approximately a little over two weeks prior to that. So at that time, um, you know, I, I started talking to everybody in the vehicle. I informed dispatch, specifically Sergeant Amendola, you know, this is the situation that's going on down here. She said she was going to come down. Um, I, you know, like I said, I started talking to the other uh, gentlemen in the car. They all said that they were 17 and 18. Um, so none of them of legal age. And at that time, um, the store clerk had come out to the vehicle and he said, what's going on? And I said, please go back inside. I'm going to speak with them and I'll, I'll come and speak with you when I'm done. And he said, okay. So we went back inside. Sergeant Amendola and Officer Hurley arrived there and we started to get everyone out of the vehicle. We asked them all their names. We got all their information. We called into dispatch like we usually do. Um, we offered, since there was alcohol involved, we offered everyone the portable breath test, as we usually do. They all accepted. Um, as I was giving them all the PBT, Sergeant Amendola was searching the vehicle. Um, all of the results of the PBT yielded a zero, so none of them were drinking. We didn't think that they were, but due to alcohol being involved, like I said, we were still going to offer that. 
Um, so they all, all yielded to zero. We had them all contact the legal guardians to come pick them up. Like I said, Sergeant Amendola was searching the vehicle. She asked the driver if he would open the trunk. He said it was broken. She said, please open your trunk. He opened the trunk. The rest of all this was in here. Um, I think it, it totals about 62 beers, Bud Lights, Budweiser's of various, you know, some of it's 16 fluid ounces, some of it's 12 bottles and cans. Um, there was also a bottle of vodka, Ciroc Peach, that was in there, and as well as the, the Jaeger that the gentleman I had seen originally had in the, the front seat there. Um, so at that time, the individuals admitted that they had all put in money, they put in approximately $90 each, or $90 collectively to buy the alcohol. They said their plan was to go to the Wakefield Woods and consume it. Um, I will mention that four of these individuals were from Wakefield, and so they were coming from out of town. Um, they had said that you know this was this was a known place to go to get to get alcohol in the area. They come to Wakefield to um, to get it there. They said they weren't ID'd. They weren't asked for their ID. They've been there. They said they had been there other additional times and got alcohol there. And they said also this was kind of on the Facebook page. You know, kids knew to go to Ricky's Liquor because they knew that they could get alcohol there. Um, so that being said, at that time, you know, the guardians came to pick up the kids. We let them know, based on whatever your child's age is, they're going to be summons to move a district court or a bull juvenile court. Um, all five were charged with minor possession. In addition, the two that um, purchased the alcohol were charged with um, procuring alcohol by false pretenses. So. The youth stated that the driver and the passenger originally went in, they got all the stuff in the trunk, and then they decided that they just, for whatever reason, they needed the Jägermeister. So the passenger went in, got that, and he came out, and that's when I saw them. So all of the all the youths were collected by their guardians. Sergeant Amendola, myself, and Officer Hurley went inside to speak with the store clerk. At that time, um, the store manager also showed up. and. Uh, kind of stood by for a minute while we were speaking with the clerk. I asked the clerk, I said, why do you think we're here tonight? He said, there was kids in a car with beer. And I said, okay, but why would, why would we be here for that? And he said, I don't know. And I said, okay, um, how old were they? And he said, well, they were 21. And I said, well, how do you know that? He said, I looked at their IDs. And I said, okay, can you remember anything specific about the IDs? Can you tell me anything about the IDs? And he said, they were Massachusetts IDs. And I said, okay. And I looked up, and there was one video camera to the right and one kind of bird's eye view right over the uh, counter. And I said, okay. So when I look at the system here, it's going to show me that you looked at their IDs. And he said, yeah, I didn't look at their IDs this time. And I said, okay. Um, and then I asked him what happened, and, and he said that the, the kids had only come in the one time and gotten all the stuff and then had left. And he said he had ID'd them sometime in the past, so he didn't feel that he needed to do it again. Um, then we spoke with the store manager, who was very cooperative. He let us go back. Officer, or Sergeant Amendola and myself went and looked at the video surveillance footage, showing exactly pretty much what the kids had said. The driver and the passenger went in originally, got all this stuff, stacked it down next to the coolers, brought it uh, up to the counter. Since there was so much, then they went back and grabbed uh, this yellow box here, placed it all in there, brought it out to the vehicle. Then a little while later, you see the um, the car moves, it goes into a different spot. They must have said, you know, kind of a bell went off. Oh, we forgot the Jaeger. So then the other one comes in, um, the passenger comes in and purchases that and then goes back out. So it was just as the, as the kids had said had happened. Um, at that time, um, the, uh, the manager stated that his clerk was no longer employed there. I can't confirm or deny that I haven't been, you know, I haven't been in the store since, so I don't know, but he, he stated that he was let go and was no longer welcome to work there based on, um, you know, this happening. The, the clerk was being, uh, was notified that he was also going to be charged for selling to minors and summons to Weaver District Court. Um, we, got, we got the video footage, we got it on a um, flash drive, however, it didn't work in our computer system down at the station, but like I said, Sergeant Amendola and myself did see that.
questions? Officer Bullis, the fifth, the fifth uh, uh, minor was from what town? This town. So the, the PBD name referenced in the narrative is, is not the youth, not one of the guardians. So I this is a PBD town reference. Maybe I'm misreading this. Okay. But you recall, you have it one Reading and four Wakefield youth. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions from members of the board? I have another question. Have you, uh, so how long ago did this happen? It was August 3rd. August 3rd, and so now it's uh, September 2nd. Yes, sir. And so have you been provided with uh, that footage from the liquor store yet? Yes, we have. You've got it. Yes, it works. Yes. Okay. And it shows exactly what Officer Bullis described. Um, they're purchasing alcohol. There's no exchange of any type of ID, just cash. Got it. Actually, there's not even an exchange of change. Well, I'm asking because the, the theme of the last visit was that there was a flash drive, but it didn't work. And, you know, right. I was wondering, you know, if you were getting a little bit stronger cooperation this time yes. around. Good. And just for introductions, so Lieutenant Detective Richard Barney. Uh, um, to pick up on where Mr. Halsey left off, I realize that you can't interrogate a videotape, but to the extent you may have looked at other transactions on the videotape, did you see behavior that was consistent with ID checking, irrespective of the participants' ages? There was um, two more purchases that were involved in this case, and there was no exchange of ID in either purchase. Okay. However, the, the individuals purchasing alcohol didn't look in question as far as their age is concerned, but still I think the policy would be to exchange an ID no matter what. Sure. So, I mean, I think the tips training suggests strongly that uh, IDs yeah. happen for pretty much everybody. In uh, the last uh, uh, meeting of this, uh, this store owner, there was the proposal to purchase some sort of device to validate the authenticity of, uh, of uh, licenses. Uh, did you see that device? I did not. Well, it sounds like there was hardly I did not time. I, I didn't see it either. I mean, I, but I you may not have been looking for it. I'm just curious right. if you might have caught, caught your eye. Which, which of our meetings was that hearing, Bob? Just can you refresh my memory? What, what was the date of the there's hearing? A, there's a five day window, Dan. It was a Tuesday night, and this was a Sunday night. Yeah. It was a Tuesday to Sunday. So. <coughs> individuals in the car mentioned how many times they had been to that They said that they'd before. been there several times prior to that. Mm -hmm. They also said that it was kind of a word around town and it was mm -hmm. why they came from Wakefield over to Reading is because they knew that they could get it there. They also mentioned that it was on Facebook. And so social media had picked, Correct. So, picked so this up. Other people yes. had said, hey, go to... Yes, ma'am. This is where you go. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions for the board? We don't, we don't have anything that says that, though, right? We don't have any. We don't have anything for Facebook. I don't have any, questions. I don't have any questions on the evidentiary front, but I do have a question of the town council once we close the hearing. Thank you. Right. There'll, there'll be some guidance, I think, that we want to take as well here. Mm -hmm. um, if there are other questions, uh, Patel? Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Chris Coleman. Uh, on behalf of Mr. Patel, Kyle Peshman is uh, with me here this evening. Um, you know, it's, it's very difficult, especially as under circumstances like this, to get up there and explain you know, why something happened or what we're going to do to make things better without it sounding just like a big excuse or somebody trying to deflect blame. There's almost really no way you can do that. So you know, whatever we say here this evening, I, I, I want to emphasize that that's not my intention. It's not Mr. Patel's intention to deflect blame we're trying to just excuse something away. That's not going to happen here. Um, this is a situation of minors and alcohol. The seriousness of that situation becomes magnified, uh, especially given those circumstances. Um, so what we're here tonight to, to bring to you is, you know, what are we going to do to try to fix this? You can consider that and make a decision that you feel appropriate. Uh, the, the clerk that was there is the same clerk that was there 
for the last incident that we were here for. He's been probably the only one who would be involved in an incident like that. When we were here last, I it was I kind of felt that this could be a situation where maybe it was just a bad day that this guy had. I didn't I know Mr. Patel for 20 years. I didn't think that the clerk that he would have there would would do this. I mean, maybe that was a little old naive, but it was the 3rd of July. It was a busy day. It was all by himself. I mean, the are up saying all these what sounded like mitigating circumstances, but that wasn't the case. The case was that he didn't check the IDs. Uh, Mr. Patel never observed that. Um, but here he is, and you know he's the captain of the ship. He's the buck stops with him. He's the guy. It's his store, so he's here to take responsibility for that. But he was fired on the spot. I mean, when they did the police report, they said he was. When he saw that video, he said, "You're fired." That was it. Um, what they're going to do now, or what they would hopefully be able to do now, is that uh, all the ships are going to be taken by Mr. and Mrs. Patel. There's not going to be another employee there. They, they, they can't even trust anybody else right now to do this. It's, this is a pretty important part of their livelihood, and they feel very uh, uneasy about that right now. Uh, you know, I know that the town has other concerns, and certainly the parents and the children that were involved. Um, they're concerned about the safety of their children, and you're charged with that as well. So, I mean, I think that overrides. I don't want to make it look like he's like all worried about himself. He's obviously concerned about the other ramifications of the, the uh, poor efforts of his clerk. But uh, certainly he has a lot of other concerns as well and would love to be able to continue to operate there. It is their store. So uh, he's been a long time operator of, uh, of the convenience store next door. I know they don't sell alcohol there. I, I know that. But they sell cigarettes there and they sell lottery tickets there. They have not had an incident. Uh, it's very, very difficult uh, to see them go down or to see them really maybe take a real, real strong hit for a mistake that they made in the hiring. Uh, but that's not. We can make that case or we can try to persuade in that way, but ultimately it's your decision to decide on that. Uh, the Commonwealth and the Selectmen have provided guidelines on the offenses. The last time we were here, I agree, there was some, uh, there was some aggravating circumstances. The, length of the time that they were there, the, uh, the, they've only been open for a little over a year. And this incident's happened. I'm not going to try to sugarcoat this. This is the way it is. Um, and another incident came right on its heels. I, I couldn't believe when I got the call. But I kind of knew in my heart of hearts what, what it was, how it happened, and it, it was that other clerk. The first offense, uh, the Commonwealth usually recommends a warning to three days. You, just, you suspended it for four. I don't, we didn't really have any argument there for that. Uh, it was what it was. Uh, the second offense, which we have here, is recommended three to six days of the suspension. Third offense, six to 12 days. Fourth offense, is they recommend a show cause hearing for possible revocation of the license unless there's other circumstances to indicate otherwise. They're guidelines. We talked about that last meeting. They were guidelines. They were, uh, that's why we went to four days, because you felt that it was warranted. Um, I only hope that when you're making a decision here tonight, and there's other people that are going to speak whose children were affected probably by this. Uh, I hope you just consider that this is this act, more the act of an employee, I think, than of the Patels, who have a very serious interest in getting this fixed. Um, and hopefully come more in line with, with the guidelines that we have here. If you want to go stronger, it's food in your purview. I probably have left something out that Mr. Patel would like to say. Frankly, I think you probably should hear from him anyway, regardless. He's sick over this, and I think he needs to talk. So, Cal, do you have anything that you want to add to what I said here tonight? That's the only thing is a bad employee. I got. I'm doing like 20 years the business. This is the first employee I got a bad one. I got hired a lot of people. They leave. Hired a lot of in 20 years. It's too many people. I didn't get anything bad yet. And I don't know. I don't even really think about it. This is going to be like a bad employee, you know. <coughs> this is the first one in my 
20 years thing he came up with a really bad guy. I already got the machine. You already got the machine. But he don't ask for the ID, that's the most thing. I gave him the tip training too. Like he got the things too, tip ID thing. I gave him after that first meeting, I gave him like almost two hours lecture, you know, telling me everything, you know, you cannot do. And he got the two almost two, three hours tip training too. Like I did everything what I can do it. But the only thing is bad. And I knew I got bad experience, I got the so many years. I got the employee, I got hiring, they leave, they come back, you know, other people, you know. I have never problem. This is a I have problem. Right now after that I fire him, I work me and my wife all the time. And I fix the problem right away, you know. And I think they did the state operation after this happened. Uh, we already checked the ID, you know. Uh, there was, you know, well, I was passed too. They did after a couple of days. They keep doing, I think. Still not present. I think Chronicle, they are. Doing. I can work all the time, that's the only thing I can do it. And I can stop this whole thing, you know. Okay, right now I cannot trust anybody. Okay, like when you do the accident, you so scared to like same thing. I'm scared right now. But right now I cannot hire anybody either. Okay, I cannot trust. If the good guy still I cannot trust. That's right now I'm in this situation right now. I am. And that once I fire him, me and my wife work all the time. Any questions from the board? Yeah. Does the board have any power to decide or authorize who can be a clerk and who can not be a clerk? No. no. So we, we have no way of really making this happen. Um, from my vantage point, this board can only judge performance. It can't right. judge potential and it can't judge intent. Right. And to do anything else uh, puts us in a uncharted territory. So while all the best of intentions have been described here, we get to judge what's left behind. I said four weeks ago, and I'll say it again tonight, this fits a fact pattern of multiple instances, multiple reported, um, multiple persons with a report that Reading has a, this particular facility in Reading has a reputation of serving to minors. If there are three reports, my experience in life is there are 300, you've just scratched the surface. It's an iceberg, 90% of it is unseen. Uh, in point of fact, there were two charges for possession and attempt to purchase. So I would argue at a minimum, there are two offenses tonight, two independent persons who attempted to purchase and were successful. And as I said in the first meeting, there are aggravating circumstances. This just fits the, the fact pattern of a willingness and an intent to do it. I don't know whether Mr. Armstrong is at fault, and I don't care whether Mr. Armstrong is at fault. One of the rights and responsibility of ownership is leadership and owning up to the results, good or bad. I don't enjoy doing this, and I'm sure none of the board takes any particular pleasure. And I don't mean to sound like I'm lecturing. I, we all get graded on what we do. We will grade tonight on, on what we've seen here. Um, for the rest of the board's advice, I, I did ask town council and Mr. Mayoris, please jump in here at any moment, but uh, I'll read from the document you prepared for me. If, um, for the balance of the board, the Liquor Control Act under Mass General Law grants both a local licensing authority, that's us, and the Alcoholic Beverages Commission, th that's the state agency, authority to revoke or suspend a liquor license for the offense of selling or distributing alcohol to a minor. That uh, licensee may uh, grieve that decision to the ABC and in preparation for tonight, I, I tried to establish both what was precedent and practice to guide what we might elect to do. Um, the key issues here are whether substantial evidence supports the finding of the violation, that's point one, and point two is whether the penalty we propose or impose tonight is reasonable. And there's a number of pieces of case law which I won't take the time to read, but um, 
Substantial evidence is evidence that a reasonable mind might accept is adequate to support a conclusion. Once we've determined that there is substantial evidence to support a finding that Ricky's Liquor has again sold alcohol to a minor, the primary issue is what penalty is reasonable. And determining what's reasonable is fact specific. In assessing that, what the ABCC is going to consider is the nature of the violation, the number, the frequency of such violations, whether our behavior and actions comport with our own written policy, and whether similar penalties are imposed on other licensees who commit similar violations. Footnote, we don't have any other um, licensees who've committed similar violations in the history provided to us tonight. In practice, I'm advised by town council that ABCC has not upheld many revocations. And again, there's a, there's a fairly long history uh, to support that fact. However, um, before we proceed, what I'd like to do is have the board take a posture, a formal posture, whether it views that there is substantial evidence of a regular business of selling to minors based both on tonight's evidence in the larger context of the events of about a month ago. John. Yeah, I, point of order, uh, should yes. we close the hearing before we get into this end of and the is discussion? There, is there any other public, public yeah, Thank you. Any other public hearing? Mr. Croft. Stephen Croft. Uh, come down to the front. Mr. Chairman, Stephen Crook, Pleasant Street, Reading. Uh, I believe all five of the members, I hope, got my email yes. today. Yes, we did. we did. So you know where I stand. So I don't, you know, just beyond five days after a hearing before this, they have another incident. Not five minutes after they have a third incident of sale. I feel at a minimum you should revoke the license outright. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yes, I'm sorry. Stand and just introduce yourself, please. Hi. Oh, hello. My name is Judy McCafferty. Um, I've been in Reading my entire life. Um, Where do you live? I live at Cross, on Cross Street in Reading. Okay. I think we played to school together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, I, you guys can chat later. Right but anyways, um, this is totally unscripted. Um, I, I first want to say that I've known Mr. Patel for many, many years, ever since I was a young girl. He and his wife are, are lovely people. Um, I live really close by to this store. Um, and um, I was a frequent um, merchant of um, the convenience store in Ricky's Liquors. Um, I got to know Bruce. Um, in my line of business, I just love everyone. Um, and, and, and I, Many times I don't um, text and drive, I don't talk and drive unless it's my kid on the phone. I say I'm driving, I'll call you right back. And when I get to a stop, I'll, I'll talk or I'll text. So many times after I, um, I have my own business, I work late at night and, and um, I'll get milk, I'll get a bottle of wine, I'll go home. And many times I would be sitting there and there would be cars there with, with children in it young kids and like the ones in the back seat were like this and I'm like no you know no big deal many times when I was in the store there would be a young kid there and it would they wouldn't be ID'd sometimes they would be ID'd I didn't know anything was going on I was very friendly with Bruce as a matter of fact I love to cook um, holidays he would be up there working he worked so hard for Mr. Patel I set my daughter up bring Bruce up a plate you know, because the poor guy's working there on a holiday. Bring him up a plate of dinner. That's how far I go. This particular, my son was the one who went in to purchase the alcohol. Totally flabbergasted by his behavior because it was just really the most foolish thing ever. But when I found out that it had happened before this, and these young kids, all of a sudden, I'm going back and my, my thoughts, like, I remember this time I was there, and then this time I was there, and seeing these kids all nervous, and seeing other children, and I, I was so furious, and, and, and I even went in to say to him, you are really stupid. Why didn't you fire him the first time? I go, why didn't you fire Bruce the first time? Because I walked in, I go, that was my son. He says, Bruce is fired. I go, why didn't you fire him the first time? Why? He had a chance. 
And I, I think this man is a lovely man. And I think his wife is as sweet as they come. And the, the, my mother, who was a cranky old woman, who's been passed away six years now, they were so darn nice to her. I mean, it was like, I loved everyone who was nice to my mom because she was kind of cranky. Um, and it was just like, we've been going to this store for so many years, I feel awful, but I also need to, I, I'm thinking, all these children, and as a business owner, I, I, I'm an esthetician, I do skin care and waxing, I have a lot of young kids. I've reached out to my, my son's friends, the girls. Oh yeah, everyone knows Bruce, mm -hmm. North Reading, Melrose, Wakefield, Reading. Everyone goes to, to Ricky's Liquors. I'm like, are you kidding me, Danielle? And she goes, no, it's, it's well known. Everybody knows about it. You can always make a deal with Bruce. And I'm thinking, and these were the couple days after the incident happened. And then I, that's when I went up and I charged up to him. And I'm like, what are you doing? Why didn't you, why didn't you fight him first? You know, why did you let this happen? And I'm really disappointed. I was a month old when we moved into this city, into this town. And I've lived here my entire life. I lived in Wakefield for 17 years, but I was in Reading every single day. I never left Reading Co-op. I never left the Atlantic until they closed. I, uh, this is my town, and I was so happy to move back into it, and I'm really disappointed. And, I, and when I found out that the first incident happened, I said, they're not getting shut down until they didn't get, they, they weren't going to get shut down for four days until September? Why? Because of due process? How does this, when I, then when I found out all these children are buying, and I'm looking at my, fun, my, my son's phone that I put on my nightstand because I wouldn't let him have it after he got caught buying, and I'm looking at all these kids, I'm not going to give away anyone, saying, you know, all this stuff, and I'm like, oh my God, this just goes so far beyond what I ever imagined. And I'm really hurt and I'm really disappointed because they're making a mockery out of us in Reading. And he had the chance, and I'm so sorry to stand up here and plead myself because I think, once again, you were a really wonderful man. But you, and it, you had a really poor choice. You should have taken something the first I time. You had two chances. The third time, you're out. Is someone going to get killed next time? These young children, well, obviously not because I applaud you now working even that much more because I know how hard you work. Now you're not letting anyone else at your home. You shouldn't have done it the first time. That's all I have to say. Yeah, I I'm thought you were doing honest, sorry. honest mistake, you know. It's not first, an honest no, mistake. First thing I'm it's thinking a blatant that mistake. Time. No, first time. No, that's why I say I do the second Just chance. Just keep your comments to the board, to the... Sure. So, once again, I, I, I think, I, you know, like I said, it was unscripted. I'm I, sitting here with my heart pounding, my eyes are going all over the room. I'm just trying to hold things in. I'm just very passionate about this um, because of what I've heard that I cannot say because I will not give away any other children in this town of Reading or in Wakefield. But what I've heard is despicable with what's gone on in this store. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Bill McCaffrey here. The only thing I'd like to say is that although um, although I'm not uh, happy with my son for the poor decision that he made, certainly, um, I think everything happens for a reason. And I think that by this happening, uh, might have saved somebody else's life down the road. Because as, as a business <coughs> owner and as a leader, you are not doing your job. And you're lucky you didn't kill someone uh, Correct. indirectly. So. Um, that's all I have to say. Mr. Yeah. McCaffrey, your address is? Same. Excuse me? Sorry. Thank you. Cross Street. Cross Street. Cross Street. Thank you. Cross Street. 62 Cross Street. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, for the public comments. Yeah? Um, I, you know, I'm going to, I believe that, you know, this person has been nice to your family, and he may be a nice person, and I don't question that, but that really has nothing to do with this discussion in my opinion. Sure. Um, I mean, it becomes, I thought it was painfully clear at, at our last visit, the seriousness of this, and that there was genuine concern that although there was one violation, it was a, it was a pattern that we were pretty sure 
had gone on a lot. And so, you know, we couldn't have been clearer. I mean, your judgment regarding your liquor license has been very interesting. Um, you hired a person who you thought was a good person, but you chose not. You chose for over six months, um, and you admitted this at the last meeting, to not train him. And then I guess he got trained in the intervening five day window between, you know, Tuesday of your hearing and suspension and Sunday. But it doesn't seem like it took. And what what this is indicative of, in my opinion, are several things. Based on what we just heard from Mrs. McCafferty, um, obviously it, I'm not going to ask her to somehow substantiate who did what to who where, and I would never ask that. But I believe her that she's been able to establish in her own mind mm -hmm. that there is a strong pattern of this going on. Um, I felt that way um, at the last meeting. Um, I was stunned by the lack of importance attached to this yeah. at the last meeting. And then, frankly, much as, you know, I've been only a Board of Selectmen member for a matter of months, but it's been my business. I, I have a I have a lot of connections to a lot of young people in this town who have started down a path of substance abuse who are in the ground. So this has been a mission for me. And for the last five years, any time there was a hearing on this topic, I was here. Every single time. And I can tell you, I'm appalled. I, in that window of the last five or six years, I've never seen anybody repeat. Um, I've never seen it, it's, it, you know, for our officers to need to be distracted because they know this is going on. It's just a question of, you know, parking the car and shooting the duck on the pond. That re it's really that simple for them to do this. That's stunning to me. And it, and it does indicate a fact pattern as you ask about, John. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know whether revocation is the right answer, but I know a couple of days is not the right answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know that, mm -hmm. uh, at least in my mind. Um, you know, I get that a lot of people could say that you're a good person who's been in business here a long time. As I said, that's kind of irrelevant to me that you're a good person. I'm sure you are. Um, your judgment as a business owner with a liquor license is extremely flawed, extremely flawed. And that causes me a problem as a guy that sits here and needs to think about passing judgment on what to do next. Um, you know, I also recognize that, you know, a year or so, a year or so ago, you made a decision to expand your business. You spent money in order to be able to do that. I'm respectful of that, but again, it comes back to the, I mean, you're, there's judgment in question here, and I, and I will tell you frankly, the idea of a handful of days is unthinkable to me. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not convinced that revoking this license is the appropriate thing to do for a lot of reasons, but I do think, you know, 90 days to think about it is probably not a bad idea. And that's kind of where my head is on this. I'll just tell you that right now. Marcy. Yeah, I, um, I think that um, the last time that, that, that you were in here and we had, um, we had this, uh, there was clear evidence. The, clearly, people, the kids who are here were from another town. So you know that it's happened before because you don't have people just drop into a town and try to buy liquor. <coughs> they said they had been here multiple times. So we... We had that oh, edge case, right. and they told the police that. And generally, you don't tell the police I've been here before. You're going to say, "No, this is the first time I've been here." If, you know, if anything. Um, this time we have the same thing. We do have two more incidents. So really, we have three firm incidents. Right, the last time these two, we've got the repeat of people who have come before. We've got the repeat of people coming from out of town. So we have a lot of evidence in my mind that this has occurred 
pretty extensively. We have videotape of them not checking checking this. So yeah, I think it's like something that. that's really pretty substantial. Um, looking at some of this, I think that revoking it is probably <clears throat> too big a jump. But I, I think that uh, a few days is definitely too little. Okay. Um, I also believe last time we were here, um, we asked when it should happen. I don't believe that we should ever ask when this happens. I believe that it should be immediate. I believe every time we do this, it ought to start on a Friday. It should be at the point of the, when it's going to hurt the most for someone, regardless of any of these offenses. I don't think we could give people options on that, quite frankly. Well, that's at all. only a suggestion to us. That's, that's, yeah, that's just my, that, you know, that's just my opinion. What is um, it? But I, I would like to ask a question. So I believe you said that you've bought the machine that, that allows to check for IDs. Is it installed? Is it at yeah, the register? Yeah. Um, it, it, has it been used? Do you, yeah. do you, are you able to check and see how many times it's been used? Is that? Yeah. In other words, every time you scan yeah, you an ID, you know, uh, you, exactly how many you did it. Um, Plus, give you time to what time you did it. So, so how, when when was this machine installed? The machine came after the incident happened. The latest. Maybe I don't know what day, what day when they come in. I don't remember the day when they come. Uh, I'm just I'm just curious because I I wonder if um, you know th that's some um, some evidence in the future. To ensure that there's yeah. been some, uh, some checking and that kind of thing. Well, I mean, my 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 inclination would be something that's pretty serious, like 60 days in addition to the prior okay. violation, which ha still hasn't happened, right? <laughs> you no. know what I mean? Yeah. So. Before we proceed, I'd like the board to take a formal posture on whether you, you want to close the. And yes, why don't we go ahead and close the meeting? Do you want to ask for any other? Any yeah. other public comment? Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, move that the Board of Selectmen close the hearing on the possible modification, suspension, and revocation of the retail package store license to expose, keep for sale, and to sell all kinds of alcoholic beverages for J. and Ricky, Inc., DBA Ricky's Liquor, 214 Main Street, for violating MGL Chapter 138, Section 34 for the sale or delivery of alcoholic beverages to a person under 21 years of age. Do I have a second? Yeah, a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of closing the hearing? 5-0. Thank you, Dan. Do you want to move to the next piece here? The no, Friday? actually, before we do Monday that, I'd, yeah. like to, um, I'd like the board to take a formal posture publicly as to whether each of us believes that uh, there is substantial effort, evidence of a regular business practice of selling to minors, both what we've heard here tonight in the larger context of the uh, activities of the last time Mr. Arnold was in front of us. Uh, I would move to support that contention. All those in favor of the statement that they believe there's substantial evidence of a regular business practice, raise your hand. Five zero. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm in favor of a 90-day suspension. I'm in favor of a 90-day suspension because I think, one, there needs to be a substantial um, message sent that we, this board, one, has a proportional response to a proportional um, problem or pr pr a proportional incident. I can't imagine a circumstance where this much evidence exists, where there is not a preponderance of other cases that just haven't made it to the surface. This is an iceberg. We're seeing 10% of the problem. Um, I was very interested to find after the last meeting, and I, I asked uh, our authorities to please keep an eye to make sure that the corrective actions were taken and that the behavior was stopped. And obviously the cost of shutting down for four days does not outweigh the benefit of selling to minors. So therefore, 90 days, I think, captures the attention. It also sends a message to all of the other alcohol based businesses in town that this board will act in a proportional manner based on the circumstances, always being proportional to our taking into account our guidelines, but not being bound by the language by taking into, con into account all of the context. So I'm in favor of a 90-day suspension to be served immediately mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as it can be imposed 
consistent with the existing four days, and I'll leave it to uh, Chief Cormier to help understand and Bob to understand how best to do that. I know there's a dovetail of two different. So is that 94 days? It is. I'm just not sure if it's A, then B, then A. Do we have the right to have it concurrent or consecutive? We do have the right to have it concurrent or consecutive. Mm -hmm. um, the last time we voted for four specific days. Yes. Mm -hmm. how do so we what you need to do is to, um, as part of your motion, to, um, to modify the previous vote mm -hmm. so that you, the four days are um, assert at the beginning or at the end of, of whatever you decide is the is the time now. So it's just a suggestion that procedurally we should try to proceed to the next uh, motion to uh, fu the finding and then uh, we can debate the okay. uh, schedule. Yeah. Uh, if uh, there's not more to add here. No, nope. go ahead. Okay. Move the Board of Selectmen find Jay and Ricky Inc. DBA Ricky's Liquor 214 Main Street Reading in violation of MGL Chapter 138, Section 34, for the sale or delivery of alcoholic beverages to a person under 21 years of age on August 3rd, 2014. Do I have a second? Second. John seconds. All those in favor? Five zero. Okay. Um, Do we know the dates of the prior? Of the current, the four day dates? It's mid September. I'm not sure we need to know that. It should be in the minutes. The minutes are already in. Yeah, there we go. Bob, you don't have any kind of a suggested motion? 15 through 19. All, uh, 15 through 18. Based this, on this, adding tacking the four on. suggestion as well, too, yeah. before we get into um, exactly when and where. Yeah. <coughs> you know, I'd almost, I'd almost like to, for two things, see, mm. see the uh, 90 day. Um, suspension start in October, not immediately. And my reason for this is, you know, it does seem like this was a bad employee. And that's a bad decision you made, certainly. So it reflects all the way up to the top. But I'd like to see if they cannot have another violation in one month period of time, almost a probationary period, to then serve starting on October 1st, a 90-day suspension. Well, you know, to that end, Kevin, um, the license, I believe, will come up for renewal <coughs> on the 1st of January. Is that approximately correct? Beginning, beginning so, of December so the probationary November. period could It'll occur after. It'll be last November meeting, whenever mm -hmm. that is. So this will expire at about the time when these licenses come up for renewal for 15. Okay, so it's not, it's not in January then? No. It's a January yeah. date, I think. Yeah, but but it the decision will be made. It has to be into the state in early December. So it'll be it'll dovetail with the meeting that we hope. Right. Mm -hmm. So so no, no so then there no, won't be there won't any be probationary whatsoever. there won't be any any period. Yeah. They yeah. will go directly from suspension to having renewal. a hearing to renewal. Their renewal. Correct. Correct. So, uh, I can actually see a little bit of benefit in that. And, it, and it's also you know. Giving, giving a business owner the chance to say, okay, hopefully it was a bad employee. The, the only problem is what, what if something does happen in there? It's not our problem. Well, it is it's our not problem. Tonight. If something happens, not it tonight, is our though. problem. But it's not tonight. And here's and, and here's kind the of thing. my point no, no. Is, to, is to see if, if the business can right itself. I, I really do understand what you're saying, Kevin. But to the, to the point of the, of the parents here, mm -hmm. I mean, do we... Do we honestly take a chance on somebody who had has displayed such bad judgment to potentially turn a kid loose on the street? I mean, that's kind of where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, um, well, I mean, the thought of it is mortifying to me. Mm -hmm. This business has had a million chances already, Kevin. It's just that nobody was watching. So one more. <coughs> Maybe no, there's John, merit in it. No, John brings up a good point. Mine, mine wasn't really that's necessary what, to, to, to give the business a chance, um, but to make sure that it's not happening again. Um, the, but the John brings up a, to, a, to, a you know, to the bigger point, point of, um, yeah. in, in, mm -hmm. in relation to that. I mean, thank God, at least what we're aware of. To the best of your this, knowledge. To the best of our knowledge, the sale of this alcohol to minors has not resulted in a tragedy that we're aware of. We don't really know, to be honest right. with you, if mm -hmm. there's any connection between regional. They're coming from everywhere. 
if there's a regional tragedy that's connect, reconnected here, I, you know, I, I think to me it would start tomorrow, mm -hmm. and the four days that are that are already owed can either we can either start with them or finish with them. I don't really care, but to me, you know, the ninety days is is appropriate given all of the circumstances that I that I feel like. I've been made aware of over the course of the last two visits here. Um, and I, I'm just not willing to take a chance, personally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, the idea of taking a chance on kids in this town and other towns um, based on the performance of judgment as the, of this business owner to date, you know, when, when it relates his liquor license. Now, you know, he's run a successful business next door for years, and that's great. Um, and, you know, I'm not suggesting that we somehow, you know, trash his opportunity to make his investment good at some point in the future. I know that, you know, we spent some money to build that out and has spent money to stock it. And, and I think, you know, an appropriate amount of time to come up with a strategy, a business strategy. Um, he's taken some steps. You know, the machine's great. It doesn't, doesn't matter. But, but the, the machine you, won't matter unless no. you check the IDs. And, you know, you've got to have somebody who actually is, you've got to be willing to either hire somebody. I, I you know, I'm, I believe that this man and his wife could probably, I guess the place is open, I don't know how many hours. I guess that if that's all you do, then that's what you could do. Um, but at a certain point, you know, the investment of time and energy in finding the right person, and there'll certainly be plenty of time to do that under what we're suggesting, and to get that person or persons trained in advance. I mean, you know, to me, I, the pass was last time. Yeah, this is the now. Yeah. This is the now. This is not, it's not time for a pass. And, our, and the peer firms in town that sell alcohol do not seem to have as big a problem finding right. talent. So if nothing else, look where they're looking. Um, I'll entertain a motion now. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, uh, move that Jay and Ricky Inc. DBA Ricky's Liquor, 214 Main Street, Reading, be penalized with a 90-day suspension for violation of MGL Chapter 138, Section 34 for the sale or delivery of alcoholic beverages to a person under 21 years of age on August 3rd, 2014. Do I have a second? Second. John seconds. Any discussion? Bob, if you, if you for some reason want to combine it with the old one. I, I'm going to work that into the next motion. Um, should I do that here? Should you do it now or is that okay? Yeah, you can work into the next motion. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And you can listen to the verbiage and admonish me as needed. <laughs> have, uh, in, in this motion, well, we have not <laughs> set a date to commence. Correct. The, that's that's, yes. that's, 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 in, the, yeah. that's okay. in the next motion. Yeah. Uh, any, just any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? 5 0. Okay. Move that the 90 day suspension for Jay and Ricky Inc., DBA Ricky's Liquor, 214 Main Street, Reading, take place on September 3rd, 2014. That would be tomorrow. And I'm adding the following verbiage that the previously imposed four day suspension be served upon expiration of this 90 day suspension. And I'm picking up with the, <coughs> what's on the paper here. That the license be surrendered to the office of the town manager no later than 9 a.m. the first day of the suspension, to be returned to the licensee by 9 a.m. the first day following the suspension, and that a placard be placed on the premises during the period of suspension indicating the business is unable to sell liquor due to a suspension of the liquor license for sale of liquor to an underage person, and that Jay and Ricky Incorporated reimburse the town of Reading for constable and advertising fees. Do I have a second? Second. John seconds. Any discussion? Is that verbiage? That's civil? fine. Okay. Okay. You might want to send that to Paul. I will. Um, okay. You got it. <laughs> you got that. Right. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? The motion? 5 0. I guess we're done. Thank you, Thank you for all who Thank you all. Thank you. participated. I'm sorry we had to meet under such circumstances. Thank you. Your strong consideration. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your camera.
Thank you, officer. Yes. Thank you, Chief. Yes. Minutes. Minutes. Yeah.
Okay. Okay, why don't we... Let's see, next on the agenda is closing the warrant for the special town meeting on September 29th. In front of you in your package is a copy of the draft. Yeah, on page 13 from tonight, um, town council, you, you got a draft on Thursday. Town council actually slightly rewarded some of the early articles, which is interesting because they're bond articles. Oh. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, I know who your bond council is just from reading these. <laughs> he said, I bet you've done them this way for a long time. I said, yes. So he's rewarded So he's them. rewarded the debt okay. articles. The zoning ones are all as he had previously mm -hmm. yep. um, approved. And, and he didn't obviously change any intent. He just wordsmithed. Mm -hmm. um, Marcy? Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm wondering if we might be able to um, cover the financial components first to... Mr. Doxter does not need to wait until the end. That's uh, as, a, as our lone absolute, member of absolutely the pu done. public here. So that would be to take out of order the Article 14. You mean specifically Four, 14, 14 and 15, 15 correct? Yeah, well, we need to do the closing first. Yes. For, right. For five e needs well, well, well yes. do, do you, we need you can, to? You could read the motion but not vote on it yet because you need to know how many articles. Oh, I see oh, what you're okay. saying. Okay, so read the motion. We just want to act on it. Both the Board of Select and close the warrant consisting of is it 15 articles yes. mm -hmm. for the September 29th, 2014 special town meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. No. Uh, uh, before we vote, I it, wouldn't it, suggest you vote till right. we go over. No, we're not going to vote. Right. We're not going to okay. vote. Okay. We're going to have over. So right. why don't we take, um, if there's no other objections, 14 and 15 yes. out of order. Do you, um, do you want me to take a crack at explaining them, or do you want yeah, please, to? Please, why don't you, for at least, <laughs> at least uniformity of explanation. Okay. Um, Article 14 is using the current uh, laws as applied to the Finance Committee in Reading and um, authorizing them and requesting them to investigate at once the light department, specifically about the procurement issue. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason this article is in here at all is because without this direction right now, under the general bylaws and the charter, the Finance Committee has no authority to do that. The Finance Committee has full authority to do that already with the town and the schools, mm -hmm. and I would assume and I would encourage them to investigate all three. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want this to be a witch hunt on just one. Mm -hmm. But without this um, Article 14, absent what we might discuss next, they have no authority to do that. Is so there that's a, a standalone. Is, is there a reason you did that order of the two articles? Yes. I, I, I would um, yes. John and I talked about it. I don't know that there okay. was any real magic to it, but this one seems... Allows us to bring up the whole well, reason you, that we're going actually, to, to the next uh, one, right? I want you to act on language that already exists today that people should be, in theory, comfortable okay. with. And then yeah. say, and by, then the way, can, so by the way, there's something wrong with that. This can happen under the current language, correct? But then correct. Mm -hmm. The charge will be under the language of Article 15. And I, I think correct. under Article no, 15, no, no. no. Article 14 will instruct the Finance Committee, I should say, request the Finance Committee to conduct yeah. an investigation. Right. So separate and apart from 15, but then. And that's a standalone thought. Yeah. The second part of the thought is Article 15 if approved as written, would give the Finance Committee that right without such an article <coughs> in the future. Without so okay. currently, this the oh, intention was I always see, to see, allow yep. the Finance Committee mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. However, the way that it's written, the duties mm -hmm. state that they can only advise us on things that come in the town warrant. Yes, so, form an article. So we have an article now that allows them to go out and do this, but this allows them I then understand. to also more broadly investigate things once they get the signatures and it's been approved. 100 inhabitants, yeah. So, so it's, it's, I missed that point. it's qualified by 100 inhabitants, so you've yep. got mm -hmm. a filter, if you will, of reasonableness there. Mm -hmm. Further, the expenditure of funds to conduct that uh, investigation or inquiry mm -hmm. is conditioned by approval of the Finance Appointment Committee, not a single person, but three persons. So you've got another reasonableness test mm -hmm. there that you've got to convince at least two out of three that the proposal is yeah. worthy. worthy. Right. So, so 100, 100 people can make them spend money out of the reserve fund and that's... No, 100 people can propose it and then two of the three must agree. So the, the Finance three. Appointment Committee is the moderator, the chair of the Board of Selectmen and the chair of the FinCom. FinCom. So the finance, th those three people have to, two of the three so must agree to spend the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If money's needed. If money's needed. All right. right. Yeah, 
Yes. That seems that's reasonable. So uh, we, we didn't want just one person to approve it. it, which is the way it was originally right. written. This, this gives and a lot of authority, so. but we wanted to temper it with some check steps. Right. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just to be clear, the meaning of that first sentence is um, the Finance Committee may do this of their own choosing at any time. Right. End okay. of that thought. Okay. They must do it if 100 inhabitants petition them to do it. Then they have no choice. So okay. that's the distinction. So, okay. So, but the but either way, the appointment committee can nullify the the will of the hundred no. inhabitants the spending by of not money. They can prevent the, the spending of yeah. money. Only the spending of money, the not the investigation. It's not clear whether an investigation would require money if if yes, FinCom just needs to coordinate with internal people, mm -hmm. town accountant. So the a town accountant salary would not. No. That's all um, paid this anyway. Is so this would be for like of forensic town government yeah. and the school. So you have to hire somebody outside. Right. 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 That, that seems mm -hmm. okay. If you're hiring someone to go into a forensic, I right. get it. Right. 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 Yeah. Does this compel? <coughs> this language only um, covers the FinCom. So this doesn't change the posture of any group being investigated to play no. nice and behave and cooperate. Nope. Okay. All right. Um, and then just to sort of go to the third leg of the stool, which isn't, it is in an article, but it's, it's something that's going to be discussed, is um, the charter as written is not the charter a lot of people think it is, as was discussed 15 years ago. And that's going to be a discussion that this board will need to have um, with or without the light department in the future as to whether you want to propose any action in November town meeting, I'm sorry, January town meeting that deals with the charter. Um, so right now, um, you know, some things in the charter give the light department quite a lot of autonomy. Mm -hmm. And that's a separate thought, but it's important to keep in the back of your mind that that, that is not the point of either of these articles. Right. These right. articles are just for the Finance mm -hmm. Committee. There is a third issue out there, for better or worse, to be decided however it's mm -hmm. decided, that the charter itself does not address the light department the way I think a lot of people believe the town does. meeting believes that it should, it should be. And, and actually, that, that is related to 14. Yeah, That's the is. reason why we believe there needs to be a finance 14 is the remedy investigation the is of, because right. there's too much autonomy, really. And then um, whereas the town accountant reports to us, right. uh, the, town ac the, the accountant for RMLD reports to the general manager. The general manager has full control over that. Absolutely. So, so Article 14 is a one-time charge? Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not an ongoing thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it ends presumably with a report yeah. of November 10th. Okay. Yes, yes Marcy. Um, I, I would oh. ask that. Mark. 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 Yes. Pursuant to what Bob has said also, given that Article 14 has a date certain of November 10th, and Bob, your point was the possibility of investigating uh, or doing an inquiry into the town and the RMLD and the schools, um, that probably is a little, little tight time frame to do all three. And my, my <coughs> guess is that the intent here is very much focused on one particular activity first. Um, if I may, um, I suggest you have that discussion with the town accountant. She's out the rest of this week. She'll be in next week. Um, she may be able to give you a lot of help along those lines. Uh, you know, to speak for the school department, which I don't usually do, they don't have a lot of procurement that's going to fall under this, uh, this type of investigation. Um, they they, uh, coll they collaborate with a lot of other school departments in a, in a collaborative, I think it's called. Um, we generally dispose of their vehicles for them, so it's not a lot on the school side. It's not like this, they're two-thirds, one-third. And the town, we have pretty good records, um, and she's been provided them all, so it shouldn't be difficult for she her to transfer those to you. And I'll just let her talk to you about the light department. I'm not as familiar. Good. Is it as specific as just procurement activities because I'm, I'm reading I'm not reading that in the language I'm reading something much broader no you know I, the, the language is well it's broad. Broad. it is it is broad. right mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't think we want to tie your hands to what you might learn right right we know of a procurement issue that's been alleged and <laughs> you know, reported on right. if the Finance Committee finds all manner of other things for any one of us you could certainly stand up at November town meeting and say, we're not going to have much for you because we're still working, and people will be fine with that. Plus, the, the 14 kind of is a directive. The 15 empowers you to do whatever you want, whatever you need to do with it. Right. Which I I'm think sorry. was really unclear. Do I have a so, different version? You know, even no, if I, you make a decision as a financing Because committee they already to, have the authority to get it all oh, together. Oh, you don't need that authority. From one, that doesn't stop you from the next one. Okay. You 
Okay. Mark, so if you, tug, if you find any threads you tug on, you can chase those threads down. You're not constrained. It's with particularity to this issue, but you follow wherever the evidence takes you. Yeah, actually, my, my question is not so much that as thinking about the possibility of looking at all three groups at the same time. It might make a lot more sense to do them sequentially with one yeah. having yeah, a that actually makes. Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense. I, I think that. Well, I think if you do them one at a time, and there's one that's screaming for it. So and, and then it just and, and to not necessarily pick on one over the other, but you know that's the one that's got mm -hmm. it. It's front and center. So do that get first. that one done, and then it's probably not a bad idea. You know, follow the trail wherever it leads you in in all the various. Mm -hmm. areas. Data speak for itself. Huh? So, given, given okay. what you just said, okay. Um, okay. does it make sense to propose some different language before we close this board on November 10th? Given that we're going to, we know that it's going to be a town meeting to address charter that issues. That day isn't met. What's mm -hmm. the consequence? Yeah, that seems rather inflexible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the report may say we have inconclusive findings at this time. Do they have a, a vehicle then to continue beyond? November, this would say no. 15. 15 oh, says. So 14 15 requires says that they are done. Okay. It time. also they says recommendation. So, so they could come and say, well, this is okay. what we found so far, but we recommend that you give us yes. more time. Yeah. Because, yeah. 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 So it is, it's broad and both. Up, so I understand, but, but I'd rather have 14 stand on its own feet and, mm -hmm. uh, and, have 50, and not necessarily. And get your point, but if 15 gets held up or. You're right. Well, you can certainly change it to as soon as possible. I just said prior to a date. Does it reflect that a target date is November 10th, or is or as soon or as, as it's practical? Or it's such future town meeting. Well, I don't want to get too. I that. would say it's prior to November 10th, or or uh, if if practical or any date. But again, it's not it's not saying that it has to be a complete report. Right. It, right. It's, it's like saying that you're going to set forth your findings and recommendations report, so and then give that report. It so is, the it findings says and transmit and, the report. Yeah. Right. So report of the findings and recommendations findings as recommendation. opposed to this the report. This would allow a recommendation could be more progress in November and then a final report. Here's what we have so yeah. far and we need more time. Yeah. That word in the findings. Or word 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 being something we get in writing. I think the current wording would allow it done by that kind of report. half baked or not done. It's not. Then you're thinking report as in it's a final report. Right. This is a report on what they have found. It's a progress report. It's Correct. a progress report. What their findings are right. and, and, and their, their recommendations. recommendations. I've well, just said the language is open ended enough to allow It's very open. Report. Yeah. Report. That's that's <coughs> that's the whole reason that report of progress. It was drafted and this then way. And a final Correct. report. That's some other time. Okay. Well, I don't think we do. So this language would be a report of progress. Then? I don't think we should. I don't think findings think and recommendations. No, the findings enough. and recommendations. Yeah. Ray's already written this. Very well the town council already wrote this, knowing yeah. what and we have done. Ray's a genius. Against 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 I just don't know. And, and just to re reiterate, <laughs> um, the purpose of this article is not exclusively to pick on the light department, it's to add the light department into the mix right. of things they can mm -hmm. already do. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <coughs> do we want to take a, uh, a posture? Cool. Yes. yes. Does the board want to take a posture on these two over there in front? Of the well, we're going to close uh, the warrant. Then we can do all that. So, okay. so we're changing right. 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 And we'll just take them one. Right. Okay. Yeah, you, had to, you had to discuss these because that if one of these is good and one of these you decide not to do, that's how many are. Right. They're paired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Right. Right. The motion is still alive to close. All right. So why don't we go back to the top of the uh, warrant. Five feet, right? Yeah. We've already done the, we just need to vote. We've got the second, we just need to vote, right? Yeah. Someone seconded? Yes. Yes, yes. I second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the motion 5B to close the warrant? 5-0. Okay. Now you may want to take 5F particles 14 and 15 right now while yes. Mark's here. Yeah. I'd like to switch. Motions, motions. Page two. Yes. Okay. Uh, would the Board of Selectmen recommend the subject matter of Article 14 of the September 29th Special Town Meeting Warrant? Okay. I have a second. Second. Marcy seconds. Discussion. No discussion. All those in favor? 5 0. Would the Board of Selectmen recommend the subject matter of Article 15 of the September 29th, 2014 Special Town Meeting Warrant? Do I have a second? Marcy seconds again. Discussion. No discussion. All those in favor? 5 0. Okay. Um, 
back to the top of 5 there. Some of these I don't know. Well, if you want me to take a quick pass, we could start on page 27 of tonight. Yeah. The warrant is up front. I'll go through the warrant report. It still is in draft form. Sure. Um, town Council was very eager to get his little hands on articles 1, 2, and 3. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but Paul and I held him off for now. Um, the belief that these are required, uh, at least two of them are backed up by instructional motions. One of them was what, in the 1930s or something. Oh. <coughs> so there is no, there is no bylaw and there is no, nothing in the charter that says you must have reports as stated in Article 1. Um, to me, if it was because of an instructional motion from whatever it was, it should have then found its way into a bylaw or the mm -hmm. charter. Right. And not just be historically remembering that someone made an instructional motion. Instructional motion right. is not a bylaw. Mm -hmm. No, and it's not binding. Nope. Yeah. Um, the list on Article One is, I'll say, a bizarre list. If yeah. you look at who's listed and who isn't yeah. listed. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I suggested to the council that we look at this in the leisure of time and we clean it up for November or, or April. Yeah. And he was fine with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and the same with Articles Two and then Article Three. We had a little harder time finding that, although I, I know I read it somewhere once where we have to amend the capital plan at every town meeting. Oh, at every Whenever town there's meeting? A discussion. Oh, I thought it was just when there was a change. Nope. Oh. oh. It ha the article has to be there. You can table it if you didn't oh. have anything to do. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, but to, just to take you through the article, I don't know of anything in an article two that um, may come up you know, for instruction motions. Sometimes at this point I know, but I don't know. Okay. On page 28, Article 3 moves a significant amount of capital around. Uh, we've worked with especially DPW and facilities uh, for the last month. We're going to request 266000 to be spent in September, and I'll detail that on another page. But then the big chunk, we're looking for 680000 in November town meeting. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons for the difference is free cash is not yet certified and will not be, I'll say, by September 29th. Mm -hmm. So we can't use free cash to balance our budget in September. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, we can in November, and I believe free cash will be pretty attractive. Mm -hmm. We then um, cut is a lot of- Is that normal timing? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mid-October is, is typical. Um, we then almost balance the FY16 capital plan, depending on what the Finance Committee does to the, uh, the rules on that. Uh, and we have a small uh, piece of juggling to do in the water fund. Do you want me to just run through all these quickly rather Please. than you vote yes. on one at a mm -hmm. time? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, article 4 is to dispose of a piece of equipment that in retrospect <coughs> we should have taken care of last April but didn't. Mm -hmm. um, we'll make sure that it's bid carefully. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> we have good paperwork on all of our past transactions. So. Um, article 5 is to uh, effectively wipe off the books some debt that we did not need to issue. So it, we have the authorization from town meeting. This removes that authorization. Article 6 is somewhat similar, but it's actual debt we've issued, and it's money we don't need anymore for those three projects. So the three projects on the top of 31, including a really small one, mm -hmm. have all been closed out. And that money is extra, so we're going to um, ask it to be assigned to the West Street project, which still hasn't had a bid in yet, so mm -hmm. we don't know. So we're just moving around. We're just moving that around. Yes. We have to spend it on something. There's rules about that. West Street is eligible as a, as a project. Um, article 7 is to get debt authorization for the water department. I'm not going to go into great detail tonight, but it has to do with a long-range capital plan that water has. And the $2.5 million um, will give the town flexibility to advance some work because we got such a large loan from, uh, from Fred at the MWRA with no interest costs. Um, we did not expect to be able to qualify all at once for four million. We got just a little over four million. We got five years worth of money fronted to us. So because of the lack of interest payments, we're able to speed up some other work, which is really nice. Article eight is uh, spending money. At the bottom line in the middle section there is we're gonna recognize the additional state aid we got. Uh, and we're going to need to uh, increase our excise tax revenue by a little bit. Attention shoppers. Somebody's kicking the power outlet, so please remove your feet from the power outlet. And it's still, no, it's still kicking. Step away from huh. it. <laughs> no, no, I think I might open that door for a quick exit. <laughs> 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 um, 
Um, so you can see that the 266,000 in requested capital is more than paid for by the fact we will not have debt service payments for West Street. We expected that project to be bid last spring when we budgeted. Mm -hmm. yeah. It still yeah. has not yet come in. Mm -hmm. Clearly, my words, the construction will not happen until next spring. Oh, uh, that's, that's not been formally announced, but they haven't even accepted bids yet, or they haven't closed yet. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's just not going to happen. Nice. And you can see a, a lot of the juggling in there is things that we knew about and were discussed even at April town <clears> meeting. <throat> um, the one thing that's a little bit new and one, frankly, one of the two clauses of this town meeting is the 100000 in legal expenses is not because of Ray, <laughs> only part of it is. Um, it's because um, the high school TLT litigation is a, is a technically complex issue, and the long and short of it is we now have to spend money out of the operating budget for litigation that we were spending out of a reserve fund for the high school project. Oh. We're not able to do that anymore because a creditor hasn't joined those funds. So we have to now pay out of a different pocket going to not affect the ultimate outcome, whatever that is. Uh, it just affects what we are allowed to pay. What's the estimate of time to completion for that? Old? I have no idea. Do you have an opinion? Um, my opinion is it would have been done years ago. And last January, I would have said it would have been complete by May or June. That it's in front of a master. That it was going to be done this summer. Yeah. yeah. So there's been a variety of reasons unrelated to us or TLT. Uh, the other creditor just jumped in and said, we're attaching everything on your all your so assets. We're really, you know, we're we're, we're kind of a third party, party buyer. Yeah, have to pay a bill that we're gonna have yeah. to pay in. Because of free cash. Yeah, it doesn't cost any more or any less. We just pay it a different way. Yeah. <laughs> Article nine starts the zoning. <clears throat> um, to go simply, and Marcy, please jump in if you need to. Article 9 simply replaces our, uh, Section 1, which is the purpose of the bylaws and a restatement of the purpose. And it's just, just reorganized a little bit, so it's... Mm -hmm. uh, traditionally, the Board of Selectmen has not voted to support uh, uh, zoning articles. And I have not put you down as yeah. a report for well, this. We but could. But you could, yeah. especially where you had a liaison yeah. on the ZAC. Mm -hmm. I could bend that rule. I, I would, no. I would yeah. recommend that you go ahead and support it. Just yeah. Yeah. See any well, I mean, downside on yeah. it. Yeah. In the chair. Yeah. So, and it's all yeah. the more reason that That's we uh, put an opinion out. Yeah. Uh, Article 10 is similar. It's, it's Section 3. Yep. It's the list of districts. <clears throat> it does not change the zoning map, although we did change some typos. Uh, Article 11. Uh, and Article 12 are yep. the leading sections. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't remember which is which. I used to. One of them is, um, do you remember, Marcy, the wetlands? Wetland protection One, and no. aquifer. One of them no, is, no, it's uh, not the it's aquifer. It's not the aquifer, it's the wetlands. It's the wetland protection because it's a duplication, and right. we have a letter from the Conservation Commission stating that they're in favor of that particular yeah. deletion. Is it a duplication of the state? It's no, a duplication we've done. It's done. something that's not needed, not necessary. It's not needed, it's not necessary, it's, it's never excess. Been used. It's oh, never okay. been used. Uh, and the other article is similar. Uh, it's something that zoning has just never been used. It's it oh, it's oh, you know what it is? It's it's a um, it's some business district, it's but the downtown down yeah. smart growth is is basically right. what it's anybody would use. Oh, it's it's never been that. used. Okay. Yeah. So that's the other one. <coughs> okay, this is housekeeping. It's it's yes. it's essentially cleaning <coughs> up. The first We're streamlining four articles and really are housekeeping. Mm -hmm. Article 13 is more than housekeeping. It's where to right. zone medical marijuana dispensaries. And mm -hmm. Isn't it? <laughs> there is a letter um, that will go in as a report from our council that, as John mentioned, they voted, I think it was 17 to 0 to support this right. Okay. And they were very appreciative of being included in the discussion, certainly. Yeah, that was, well, I think that was a really was only important right. gesture. It was. Very important to get their input. And, and then you've looked at articles 14 yes. and 15 already. I can save us some time make a plenary motion if this works. Uh, Actually, just a quick thing. Back on the yeah. medical marijuana, Bob, uh, yeah. like maybe last meeting, there was some discussion that North Reading was also voting on their own version of this, at least as far as zoning. Oh, I haven't heard that. It was in, in this meeting? Yes, it was in the oh. notes that come out on Thursday that um, North Reading was voting on their own zoning for this. Okay. Their own zoning for this is very much in line with ours. They're allowing it in their industrial zone, mm -hmm. and their industrial zone just happens to abut our wetlands. It's right on the other side of the it, it, it's, They're doing exactly Pump. what we're doing. Talk they're talking. putting it in a. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, putting it in the industrial zone. And they have another little section that they would do on the side there too. I think they had two. I think they had two or three. They were looking. I don't know if they were choosing or they were going to put them all. Their layout is so much different. Yeah. It really doesn't have I remember looking at the map they had in the same picture center. that you're <laughs> referencing. Well, kind of the center. Yeah. All right, good. 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 So I'm wondering if we can do a, a yeah. motion that we approve all of these at once. I'm going to move Board of Select and recommend the subject matters of Articles 3 through 13 inclusive of the September 29, 2014 Special Town Meeting Warrants. Do I have a second? RC okay. second. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor? Five zero. And if I might ask if, if any of you, I'll go through the chair, uh, wants to have a report more than just what your vote is, please feel free to send that in to me sure. next week. So especially so, uh, fourteen and fifteen, I think of but that's, I'm asking you as Board of Selectmen, I'm sure as the ZAC, you're gonna right. give a much mm -hmm. larger report. You and I talk about fourteen and fifteen. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, um, yeah, on the, um, the zoning, you know, I don't know if we need a separate report necessarily from yeah. the Board of Selectmen. I would just say, no I just say we vote you vote on it, and our vote is, is, yep. yeah, is reflected in the, yeah. I think that's sufficient. Okay. Yeah. You want me to jump to November Town Meeting? Please. Uh, last two pages of tonight's. We're on a roll. It's, it's really hard to get me to get in this mindset. <laughs> Luckily, I started this a long time ago, <laughs> back uh, in June. <laughs> Uh, when Ray started, he said, I can't believe you already have warrants out through April. I said, I had to. <laughs> um, this warrant report looks really light to me, and I, I know we're having a September town meeting, but I'm going to really have to ask department heads if I'm missing something. But the first three are the same three we, uh, we always have. Mm -hmm. and I don't think we're going to need a prior year's bill, but I'll leave that up to Sharon. We'll probably leave it on just in case. I don't know if we'll need to amend the budget. We may. There's an, an issue in community services that hasn't been fully ironed out terms of that uh, regional housing position mm -hmm. as to whether it's a wage or an expense. So there's, there's always something to move around. Article 6, I probably haven't talked to you about for a while, and I'll need to catch up with the police chief. Uh, the Attorney General, uh, to backtrack a little, a couple of years ago, two or three years ago, town meeting passed an animal control bylaw. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the Attorney General took quite some time and finally came back and approved it but said you needed to make some changes to the uh, appeals process. Mm -hmm. So right now there's a three-member board of appeals for this. Um, and so that's, we've been waiting for town council. That clearly wasn't a high priority, if you will. Yeah. Um, but it's something we need to do either in November or April. We should really clean this up. Are these changes or additions to the language? Um, it will be changes to the current appeals process portion of the bylaw. Okay. So will we have, a, we have to form a committee for that? Uh, I don't think so. I think it'll be administrative, but if it's anything mm. more complex, we'll have to push it off to April and we'll have to go through a process. Um, it, yeah, it seems like you ought to be able to do that in the framework of what we've got. Uh, uh, Jim's the expert on it right now, and I really haven't talked to him about it probably for two months. But from what he described to me, it, it seemed like paperwork, if you will. Um, the, the Attorney General's office made a strong suggestion about what they wanted, and I think we can just do that, but it, we needed a town council to do that for us. Um, we're hoping to have a permanent building committee set up. I'll meet with the bylaw committee on Thursday this week and get an update from them. Oh, gee, I hope we're getting that. <laughs> um, you remember the, the old bus shelter that I said the problem yeah. was solved? Yeah. Well, you notice the bus shelter is not there yet. Yes. Um, I finally wrote a letter to... Uh, the, the real name is Royal Royal A Hold. Um, over the weekend, and said we're going to town meeting. We're taking the land. Oh. Um, they have been very difficult and very slow, um, and it has nothing to do with the fact the store has been busy because of market basket the last few weeks. Um, actually, the manager of the store is very nice and very easy to deal with, but the company back in you know Europe is not so easy to deal with. Mm. I'm almost thinking they want us to do this now because it causes them to do no work. So Ray is coming in a little early tomorrow night to meet with Gene and I to craft an article to do this. And all it does is it gives us the right to put the bus shelter there, to effectively, by eminent domain, maybe for a cost, seek what's called a roadway easement, I think, until he corrects me tomorrow, <laughs> to allow us to do this. So it's this not is a stop and shop we're going to have to do. Right in front of stop and shop. Not an acquisition, yeah. but a, a, the right to an Just easement. right to an easement. We yeah. already have one easement there. We need a different easement for this purpose. That's still an eminent domain taken? Um, not clear. 
it's not clear. But you usually put that language in. We might we might want to put the language in, but again, I'll, I'll leave. I think that all easements right. have that. I uh, I think they do. Yeah. yeah. Just in case. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's an unfortunate situation of if you were dealing with a local business, this would have been cleaned up long ago. Of course. The mm -hmm. corporation over in Netherlands just doesn't have well, it's, it's, it's not, not their It's not their top mm -hmm. priority, right? It probably just yeah. like it <laughs> wasn't <laughs> your top priority no, or they, the uh, priority. Yeah, actually, it's it should be. Get market pass gets shut down. That's been the top <laughs> priority. <laughs> <laughs> They've been dealing with jeans, so I'm surprised it's not the top priority. But <laughs> <laughs> somehow it hasn't been. Oh. got market basket advertising. The uh, Article 9 is, is already crafted, the language is already done, CPDC has already voted on a zoning bylaw change that really has nothing to do with the recodification. No, and this is a standalone issue. That's a, that's a specific yeah. area of the And then um, I, I've talked to Jean and Jesse, and, and I know Marcy, um, you know, for the last few weeks and months, how to present this. The current thinking is Article 10 will be a comprehensive update of the zoning bylaws. Stem to stir and everything not done in September town meeting will be done in Article 10. If Article 10 fails for some reason, doesn't get two thirds for any reason at all, Article 3 will be a scaled back version of Article 10 that will recodify the zoning and not do anything controversial. Don't ask me what's controversial, but there's a few things like sign bylaws to be discussed tomorrow night. Um, I don't know how. Although, quite frankly, most of the things that are controversial we put onto a parking lot. Yeah. to be considered later because okay. we did all agree at the point in time that we were doing this that we were going to be streamlining and modernizing but not changing so yeah so 11 is more of a fail safe it's if a, you run into trouble with 10 exactly so if 10 passes you don't need 11 if um you know it could well be that everything of controversy is removed from discussion yeah. i'm thinking like in-law apartments signed by law um, 11 might com might be completely unnecessary, but you're going to have to close this in three weeks. So, But quite frankly, the accessory apartment discussion needs to be moved forward, needs to be discussed, because yeah. yeah. there's a lot of demand for that type of housing in town. Yeah. Um, and there's and it was one of the top items that people yeah. had concerns with and were wanted to move forward. I've so. just never seen this construction before of uh, Plan A and then Plan B. Oh, in quick succession. it's happened in the past. So the recodification um, has to time. happen anyway. <laughs> the, essentially, most of the work that's in there needs to happen anyway. Yeah. The pieces that are additional incremental work, because I did talk to them about this, um, would have to do with the um, uh, making sure that um, it's really housekeeping of, of ticking and tying to make sure that the old components tie into the new codification. You get 10, you don't so. need 11. Does 11 undermine 10? Well, yeah, that's, that's what concern. I'm worried about. I think you'd about. table 11 if 10 passed, but, but does but it give people the reason to pull it see, out? I and personally that's something you need don't to think that it should, I don't think that yep. it should be on there, and I've and told that to And you have three weeks before. to discuss whether to not um, throw that out we, there. We what can I, throw it out. What I believe we should do, what what I think we should do is, are we going to have anything? Are we going to have turning point devices for September meeting? Yeah. So if we have turning point, what I believe we should do is actually mm -hmm. to have a component. We're doing a presentation on the Just zoning do a presentation bylaw. On it. Is do, but but to do to actually do voting and and say to people, are there any? Where are the components that you have concerns about? Where do you see that you would need to vote this down? We have time between now and November. Let's hmm. let's clean it up. It's using town meeting as a deliberative. Uh, Discussion. And then we have everybody yeah. say has said That's yes. You had enough open forums. You've agreed yes. that you need to like we lay it out, and you get to the next minute. You go okay. This is what you yes. you you said just two months ago. How right. can you say that you right. now need to vote this down? What, what's our closing date for this? But you're, you're going to have to close the warrant on the 23rd, which is oh, before, before the September the special. Yeah. So we won't have However, that However, well before this goes into print for yeah. town meeting in November. You can write under Article 11. This will be tabled with no other information. You know, there's no need for this article for the following reason. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but you, if you don't have it here, you can't add it. Yeah. That's so you put it in there, All right. close it. Put it in as a place, and then you determine after the fact that it's yeah. not. It's superfluous. Yeah, to use the, use the uh, verbiage to. But to I, say I it certainly makes. see your point. If you yeah. offer both, if you offer both, both options, I think I think you're inviting a vote you down yeah. is the problem. Yeah. yeah. So. And there's no way to. But if it Make fails, 11 more, I want to say vague, but more generalized, so that if Well, the other option, and I'd, I'll have to go, go back, I think this works. Um, you'll need to close the January 5th special town meeting, and I think you'll be able to do that 
at a time when this will have already passed or failed. So that's, you could do recodification on January 5th. That's more than that's thought. true. I think. January 5th, we have a special meeting? Yeah. Why wouldn't you be able to? That's, that's for the charter. Um, I have but, to look at the, uh, when you close that. Zimbabwe's report. How long is it? It's, it's it like, this one is like six mm -hmm. to eight weeks in advance. So I think a special is tighter, four weeks. Shouldn't be a problem, but I really want to check. I've. You really kind of want to get people. I've got my choice. September and November yeah. timelines here. I didn't bring my January. The, um, the last article is the West Street Historic District. I had a discussion with the chair this morning. Um, I don't know how many of you know what's going on, so I'll just update you. Um, the West Street Historic District has filed with the state to broaden the West Street Historic District to include Summer Ave. That filing has happened? That filing has happened. That filing oh, has been discussed with town council, and that filing has happened. <clears throat> um, a portion or all of it? It's not clear to me because I haven't Summer seen Summer goes paper. all the way across it, Main Street. I saw a draft. It was a large portion. Mm -hmm. Okay. But not certainly not both sides. Okay. It was to so the... Is it running all the way up the Main? It runs all the way to Woburn Street. In the other so direction. So Woburn to Summer? I don't think I mean, so. Woburn I don't to think it goes to the other side of West. Woburn. Woburn to Willow. Or west, whatever. I don't think it goes the whole length. It goes oh, moving right. to somewhere. It's okay. that Mineral stretch. Street Bridge right. area, maybe. <clears throat> but I only saw a draft. I don't know. I haven't seen the final paperwork yet. And who's presenting this? A petition um, or a board? This will be the West Street uh, Historical District Commission. I guess they have it is going to ask you to sponsor the article, I would assume. Uh, and well, the article would be can't, to change. Minute, can't they put their own? I, I, um, they could. I get nutty about this stuff. Yeah. And maybe I'm the only one, but. When I see Board of Selectmen on an article, it implies, it implies. we yeah. either generated it and intend to support it. And, and that's why I think it's right. important that you yeah. vote also, mm -hmm. and it's in print. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you're sponsoring it for someone and then you're voting right. two to three to support it or whatever, then people will know, okay, they were courteous but enough to sponsor Any board can put it on themselves by a simple yeah. majority vote yeah. of the board. Okay. So when, when if I were them, I'd take it to the net. I wouldn't want anyone else's yeah. sponsorship. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I think that... It makes more sense for them to sponsor. Sure. So they they applied last week with the state. There's a whole co complex process of mm -hmm. public hearing and notification, uh, and they did it last week in order to hit the November town meeting. Right. And again, they did the, a public hearing last week. No, they didn't. No, they no, started the paperwork. Oh, they, started they have the sixty paperwork. days oh, to okay. have the public hearing. They have okay. not scheduled it yet. There's a meeting one of these Mondays either. I think it's a week uh, next Monday the night. They should be real for the November meeting. But we'll have closed this. You'll get whatever, much more information, they, including right. an actual article. <laughs> That'd be nice. You know, which you know I haven't seen. <clears throat> so they just came in this morning and said, "Yes, we do want to request this." So I said, "Okay, I'll just advise the board. Obviously, we'll need to talk." So this is just a placeholder. Yeah. 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 But if we were to vote on it, we'll we'll essentially vote on it before we've actually had a public hearing. We don't, we don't have to. Uh, uh, yes, you'll to be, recommend. You will be. Well, you'll be if. Which, You'll be closing a warrant it. with it on there. Right. So Why do we have to close this hold, hold, warrant hold, hold, hold. earlier it's fine, than but 23rd? There's sponsorship, Why there's closure, and then, then there's so who's going to present it. And those are three different entities. We we are we have to close yeah. the warrant. Why do we have to close the warrant so early? That we just closed the warrant. It's only that's statutory. Maybe a week earlier than usual because you don't happen to meet the first week oh. of October. It's okay. fairly oh, early okay. for the fall. It's specified oh, well, it's in the spec chart. Okay. It's in the chart. But uh, any board, okay. as I said before, can put it on with a yeah. majority vote, I believe, and then can we can elect to support or not support any article. Generally, our recent history has been to support articles we have our name under. You know, unless there's some reason we're not doing it under our own but you have policy. to vote to put it into the uh, art into the we're board. compelled to put anything on that's legitimately presented either by petition or by other boards Those yeah whether, have to we go on. whether we vote for yeah. whether we agree or not we have to close secondary right. to the discussion right. so those are the only articles i know of and then january mm -hmm. we're preparing for a monday night i think it's january 5th tuesday january 6th and wednesday january 7th special town meeting uh, well, the three, three nights in a row. Well, well, this is all charter. <laughs> Happy <Yeah>. New Year. <laughs> yeah. Boy. And the deadline for that, much like the library last year, is very tight in order mm -hmm. to hit the uh, local right. election. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have two. Right. So um, I'll meet with the charter commis committee, I think it's on the 15th. Uh, Bob, do those changes have to be mailed to every uh, voting residence in so. town? Um, that's a really good question. I think they do. 
That's my inclination too. Yeah. Yeah. So there's I think a budget maybe you and I talked about impact for that. Yeah. yeah. I, that sounds right. To every household. I'm not sure so about each. After, after the town meeting votes. Yeah. Right. So those dates just they're immovable. Those dates um, have to be there. Sure. We have to be done by the eighth or the seventh. I can't Got remember. It. And it, it seemed so. foolish to try to do it the week between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. So the fifth seemed like the soonest reasonable date. And I don't remember when you need to close that warrant, but I'll say it's late November, early December. Hmm. Um, and, I, you know, we'll get a lot more on this. Um, I've only been to three meetings, so I really can't say, but Bill Brown, who was in my office this morning, said he's becoming much more confident that this is doable for those dates. He wasn't that confident a month or two ago. This is Bill Brown talking around. Yeah. Uh, Bill. Alan's okay with it for now, too. Um, uh, I think I'll, I'll certainly give you a draft after their next one or two meetings. Ray is going to attend their second meeting in the future. After that, I'll probably give you a draft and show you where they are. Um, I would say, with few exceptions, they're really not doing anything controversial. Yeah. They're just trying to clean up language. They're a definition of cleanup, and mine might be a little different, but they're trying. Now, does Ray finally settle this question of their scope? I hope so. Uh, they're not asking anymore. I the, think the one so, issue we have not <laughs> tackled on purpose is the light department. Yeah. And that's for future discussion that you'll have to be part of. The options range from all kinds of inclusionary language to exclude them from the charter completely. And that's obviously a future discussion we'll have to have. It makes sense. And it, you can put it in this uh, recodification, if you will. You can put it off. You don't have to do it in January 5th. But it seems the to opportunity's make sense. there. Yeah. If we wanted to move out on that, at least get a sniff at what the range of possibilities were, when would it make sense calendar-wise? I, um, I think Ray is probably going to meet with the Charter Committee on the 22nd. So I might have something for you at your next meeting on the 23rd of September. I might be able to give you a more complete update and maybe some paperwork. Because uh, I don't think he's going to talk to them about the light department that night, but that depends what happens at the meeting on the 15th. They may say, we want to talk about it. Okay. I would suggest putting it on your agenda probably in October. You're, you're booked on, Feb on September 23rd, but we put that on your agenda in October. That's plenty of time to get back to them. I'd be inclined to do so. They're, they're meeting no. weekly except for holidays and town meeting on Monday nights okay. through uh, charter, charter through uh, early December. Um, at either this town meeting or the November, is there going to be at all an update on the library and where that stands? That'd be sporting of them. Uh, could be. Um, it seems like it would make sense not to September. have that. Sure. Yeah, probably November makes the most sense. Uh, it just seems like we're spending a bunch of money and people yeah. haven't heard of anything except yeah. when they're asking for money. It would probably be best <laughs> to actually do a presentation and say this is the status yeah, of we it and we're not asking moved? for more money. Are they moved into their new space? Um, the latest uh, plan I saw had the library closing on or about the 1st of October. Mm -hmm. To be moved in second so or that's third week in so October. That, the moving that's moving date. It has. It's moved a couple Because it was like an August date. Yeah, yeah. It was, June it was uh, well, way back when it was. It was September 1st. It's, it's moved out. It's the it. most fluid schedule I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, and well, I couldn't. Apparently there's my, not that my, milestones come and go. Fluid, fluidity with the um, <laughs> strategic planning committee. Oh. <laughs> Different topic. So I, I think a November update would be very important, and I think uh, the Finance Committee is all over that Good. in terms of uh, wanting to know what's going on. Uh, I think Good. we're having a meeting Thursday morning at 7.30 to discuss yeah. that. So, uh, We actually haven't spent a huge amount of money yet, uh, less than a million. Well, I would hope we haven't spent a huge amount of money yet. Uh, well, there's a lot of money going into design, certainly. but. You know, out of 18 million, we're still scratching the surface. Uh, real money starts getting spent uh, November, December, January when we start mm -hmm. getting into construction. Yeah. We're gonna break ground November, yeah. December, January. As soon as everything freezes. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> <laughs> well, they can do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's more expensive. That way.
Let's see. Next on our agenda is preparation for the financial forum next week on the 10th. Yeah, I don't know if the board, um, tomorrow night the finance committee meets to discuss this, so it's kind of hard for me to give you much in advance, but if the board has any thoughts, our, our um, state senator and two state reps are in that night, uh, approximately 7.30, they'll come early. Mm -hmm. I've told them we're going to block the door so there'll be no getting out early. <laughs> 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 and more state aid was, was necessary. Mm -hmm. um, but, but they legitimately <laughs> want to know, aside from money, what we do for you? What's your agenda? What's your mission? How can well, you help? Will this, Mark, will this play off of your last meeting? Yes. Yes. So, so, so. so you've got, you know, obviously the... The white sheets. The, you know. Yeah, so we've got the white sheets and there were some priorities. Yeah. All right. The people who attended were able to do. Um, I think what I'm going to propose to the finance committee tomorrow night is that um, if we can get a bigger audience, it would be great to kind of review these and kind of yeah. get a sense of what's going on. Really give our state legislators information on where we see priorities, where we see some needs. A couple of things really stand out. Um, you know, the, a lot of it related to school kinds of issues. Let's see if that's kind of where things stay, as well as innovative ideas toward 2020. Uh, mm. Those were kind of the things that people wanted to. There's talk some about. recreation things in there too. There's a more sorry, list. Yeah, right, yeah, I didn't mean to say schools, the schools and recreation yeah. fields popped up. Right there. Kid things. Yeah, yeah, really, very much yeah. kid things. Mm -hmm. do, so do, the do, intent do. of this, the second meeting is to talk more about sources of revenue. So if that was uses of revenue. This one is meant to be sources, so it's extremely appropriate that our state. Right. I told so this could be a short meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a real short meeting. But, but more on that topic, would, would we want to devote some of the evening to have, maybe this is putting them on the spot, but when you, government's always a little bit of a mystery to me at that level. It would be interesting to hear, after the, we present the these, these uh, summaries from our last meeting, what sorts of ranges of options are available? Is that an appropriate use of the evening from, from our legislators? To the degree to fund it, you mean? Fund, support, uh, is there anything that, that on the state side, either in terms of uh, um, collateral activities, that, that, um, roads, and roads, road funding to do some of the, uh, I just don't even know the questions to ask, but mm -hmm. if you throw up, we have on the board, we have some plans for, for recreation. We have some plans, aspirational goals to do this, that, and the other thing. Turn it around. What, how can the state help us in this regard? We don't know the questions to ask. Rather than this devoting entirely to just fundraising, where will the funds come from? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. That yeah. makes sense. I think it's worth getting their feedback. Yeah, <coughs> yeah I absolutely. Actually think that's a Rather great than idea. Have sit there and watch us you know, debate ourselves. Yeah, and then say, do you guys help us once we yeah. get to a certain Put place? Put it back on. Yeah. Why don't you, we say, how can you help us? Yeah. Here are, I mean, I, I you know, I think that that exercise be presented prep them our wants. And they've, they've asked right. me, what do you want us to do that night? And I said, well, after Wednesday night, I'll right. have a better right. idea. Okay. You, Bring you the know, check We can advance. Yeah. Yeah. They already know that. <laughs> what, what they said it's going to bounce. <laughs> they said it's going to bounce. <laughs> Seriously, it may not be necessarily a checkbook. It might be influence or insight or yeah. program connection. Other programs we don't even know what exist or it dovetail into this. These the politicians kind of levels will be, that we be there will be all state reps. Yeah. So Brad Jones and Jim Dwyer <coughs> and, and uh, uh, Jason, Jason Lewis. Lewis. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there is some levels well, that we can hit. Um, that we're and not aware what I'll show the finance committee some, tomorrow some night is we had a management meeting with department heads and assistant department heads in August, and they did the same exercise as the people in that room did, given the list, so yep. they didn't get to make up their own. That's pretty interesting what they voted. These are the boots on the ground. They didn't they didn't agree with a lot of what volunteers saw. Mm -hmm. they, they see things differently. That would be an interesting yep. yeah. Now well, I didn't have perfect overlay. attendance at the meeting. It was yeah, August, it but it was, you know, a dozen people or so. There were some overlaps and there were some differences. Mm -hmm. It would be really interesting to play those um, their side. flavor was much more to be real generic social services. They see that. Volunteers we don't know. That, right how much of that goes on in this community. Now whether the government should be doing it or someone else do, we all see it. So it was interesting. Well, the people that were in that, the volunteers who were in that room, aren't tuned into that. Right. Right. You know, I mean, that's just. Well, they you know. wouldn't be, right? You're getting right. social services. That's not generally something that you get volunteers to help with. So here's a right. silly thought, just to pick on that one. If we decided to do something like a public-private venture with uh, social services, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, is there anything that the state has or could suggest to yeah. help the health? That's the kind of question yes. that those I would are, like yeah, to those ask. Those are the, the kind of questions, questions you want we want to have. Right, yeah. I, I want to know what are your hot buttons? What are the things where there's opportunities? And I'll tell you, one of them, they're going to say complete streets, like it or not. They're going to say, you know, that's just a hot button coming right from the federal government. There's plenty of money if you want to have pedestrian, walkable, bikeable paths to get you all the money you need. But I want other examples of that. All right, all right. That, that's one. That's fine. We'll do that. What else do you have? I wonder if we can create better plant uh, uh, beds for trees with the, when, when doing some of those crosswalks. How about putting the trees we want in when you give us <laughs> millions of dollars? Uh, but they're a pretty creative group. Um, it's not going back 10 years ago to the, to the days of earmarks. We could actually ask, I need 400 yeah. grand for this project. I don't really feel like I want to go there. It, it has crept back a little as opposed to not at all for a few years, but that's not my style. No, if there's a program or something that pre-exists, we're just ignorant to. That's the thing yeah. I'm trying to... Right. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, got, I, bet there is. I bet there's hundreds of them we don't know. Yeah. We're off in our own little bubble. And I'm curious to know where they represent a pretty wide area. What, what are the best thoughts you get from other, your other communities that are in the same position we are? Well, that goes to regionalization. Is there something that they can help us with in regionalization? Mm -hmm. And then one thing that would be tremendous is if we can get a good turnout to come to the meeting. We've got a nice big space in the uh, yes. village multi-purpose room. Um, I've sent articles to both papers, uh, just kind of an announcement. So how do we get them there? What do you think? We're having we're food. Pizza. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be better than even last time. Last time was just a test run. I don't know. That food was pretty good. <laughs> it was pretty good. I heard from the school committee, you got lobster? <laughs> <laughs> No, that was the finance yeah. committee that got lost. <laughs> could serve other comestibles, but we'd have to card <laughs> people at the door. <laughs> um, we're going to invite all town meeting members through a um, list that we have. This is social yep. services, uh, community list that we'll send yep. email out to as well. Yeah, that's this One Thursday. Friends. Um, I think Nancy Doctor suggested we create a couple of signs to put up on. Oh, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, and we were trying to think of how to hit the Fall Street Fair, but that's not just Reading people, so I'm not sure if it's quite as yeah, important. Right. Well, if we have a town of Reading, do we have a town of Reading booth? Not really. Different entities have it, Library, Board of Health, yeah. our CASA. And the firefighters aren't making chili, so we can't do they're it there. Not. Mm -hmm. Chili? They're, uh, they're on shift that day, the two best chili makers. They didn't do it last and they year. They did not want to they're share with the rest of the fire department their recipe. Huh? That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't blame them. They okay. did They did suggest, though, that we have a chili off as a whole separate event sometime in October or November. I like that Plenty idea. of other towns do it, have all the fire departments in the area compete. Yeah. We'd be glad to show them how to do it right. <laughs> <laughs> Said, well, in the spent sense good. of regionalization, that might be a nice idea. Mm. That actually might really have some possibilities. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Um, hmm. some, of these, some of these guys have oh, a little, I, you know, fillet in there, in their chili. That's a that's a big <laughs> deal. The, oh yeah. Those those chili things. Yeah. Um, used to have a client in Texas that had I don't know well, something Texas as long as this table. He had his own <laughs> little grill. He hooked it up to his camper, and went to different I don't know whatever. Well, he's not alone. There's a lot of that. Oh, yeah. There's, in there's Texas and, uh, yeah. Hardcore. And, and these, our firefighters do travel around New England to contests, and they often win. Not always. I saw a picture of them down in Connecticut a year or two ago. Uh, and it was packed. Mm -hmm. So you never know. Any other questions? So on the if, if you forum? have any, I'll That's what's give, next up for us is the financial forum, right? Yeah, I'll give you feedback yeah. from tomorrow night's discussion. I'll send you out through the chair, whatever it is they decide. And if you individually want to email me with any thoughts, I can then share them with Mark. Any other discussion? Why don't we move on? <clears throat> Town manager goals. That could be a long one. Can I just ask just a courtesy to approve an ad hoc committee for this naming thing. Uh, is that a hard one? I don't is think it's hard. It, but it's not on the agenda, right? The question is, for example, the naming group in the, high, in the school, I think is nine or ten people. 
how many folks, how many people were you thinking, and what's composition were you thinking? I think that's where all the work is going on. I think we put a small group together, half a dozen. I think you could do it under uh, topics not reasonably anticipated. No, I think there's a forum for it. Did you have a particular construction you were thinking of, John, or just a committee to be determined by whom? Probably should do up a motion for next time. I, I'm open to the. If it's an ad hoc committee, you'll want to advertise that yeah. and, and publish it for your 23rd. All I'm saying if is, if the idea to go forward with an ad hoc committee can be agreed on, mm -hmm. then the format can come. I, you know, I, I'll work on that and then bring okay. it back at our next meeting to I'm, finalize. I'm okay, but I can't go st start doing the work. Yep. I have no mm -hmm. objection. So you're you proposing know, to form an ad hoc committee construction be determined at a later date. Yeah, I, what I'm suggesting is that if we agree in <coughs> principle that we need an ad hoc committee to do this, I'll go do the work and report back. Well, yes. How's Got that? You. No, that, that works fine. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. One thought is, do is there make any sense to tie it into the naming committee? This may be a really mm -hmm. silly thought. To tie it into the one at the schools level, they've already got... Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> or expand that, or expand that to be beyond its current. I, I don't. I, I, you know. All right. I had one. Maybe bad. I'm happy. I have one bad idea. Maybe we can talk that. Talk about that yeah, at, we, the next, we'll, at the next. At the next. We, we the should discussion. have an actual agenda item Starting on this and, and, in the and same, talk about in it. In the same reason we have one building committee that we're trying to get. Yeah. yeah. This is analogous wow. in that regard. It's, it's sort of a moot point at that point. But they've already named everything that can be named. similarities or differences, I think. What form would the motion take? Uh, right now, just uh, you can take a sense of the committee, I it's guess. Just a sense, it's just, just a sense of the no. committee. We're we're saying, yeah. The board. You're saying, okay, go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 go and put your proposal yeah, together. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. about yeah. it next time. I think it needs a motion. Uh, we don't okay. need a motion. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. If you guys are good with me to That's you know, yeah, put yeah. something together to finalize yeah. at our next yeah. meeting, sure. We'll get it on the agenda, and I think it'll be fast. And I'll look at the considerations like. You know, some kind of connection to the school thing. Although the Reading Hall of Fame would have maybe have, but you're talking about Reading Building, not just athletic facilities. Right? Well, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it. I mean, it's, there's more than just athletic well, facilities. Town Manager Hall of Fame. Town Manager Hall of Fame. There you go. <laughs> Limited candidate pool. Mm -hmm. So far. <laughs> <laughs> Name posthumously. <laughs> All right. Uh, on the ma town manager goals, I have heard from 1.9 of you. <laughs> Kevin being the point nine, John Arena being the one. Um, I, I will tell you, I, you I had the best it. intentions, and it's, <laughs> it's not easy. I just it's not yeah. easy. It's, oh, wow. it's long. Yeah. Yeah. It's part of the problem. I had to do it. It took me two hours to go through it, and then I typed it into Excel. So and it takes a while. You don't have to vote on every single sub article well, as John did in some cases. But you have to but think about you may them want all. To. So. It's up to you how you approach it. I found when I went through it the second time, that's when I had the best balance of what's important and what's urgent. Because you go through it the first time and you yeah. tend to think of those in the same As being dimension. the same. It's important and it's urgent. But you can't have everything be a 1-1. One -one. So then you go back and say, well, this is really important stuff, but it's not urgent. Can, can you explain this optional? Because I didn't quite get that. And that was, I was getting I hung up on that as I started the word trying optional to. because, in my opinion, I thought that's not something that we have to do. Okay. Um, West Street is not optional because the state's already doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was as black and white as I could possibly so figure out. So optional are things that you think are, you know, they're you on here, but you don't necessarily right. think you need. Whereas do. some things, they've already got a head of steam. You're not going to change the zoning. Right. Uh, whether you like it or not, it's going to hit some town meeting and so on. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot there. But there is a lot. Do, I, I know you know these words, but limited yeah. bandwidth. And it, urgent yeah. is a subset of important. It has to be important to be urgent. No. No. Not necessarily. No, there's, no you can have something that's, that's small but has to be done right it's away. It's important yeah. that we get the charter recodified. Uh, recod it's yeah. important. It doesn't have to be done tomorrow. But if it's urgent that it be done tomorrow, it better damn well be important. Right. The urgent thing is almost always important. An important yeah, thing that's is what I'm saying. Urgent. We might have something for the fall street fair that's that's urgent, but it's not that important, so we might not do it. No. But if we're going to do it, we better do it by the seventh. Yeah, chili, I see. Yeah. Chili. Yeah. chili. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess the footnote here—it's kind of urgent, but I guess it's not that important. <laughs> for you, uh, three point one persons who haven't gotten your input in. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Please do okay. so. I Summer's did, over. It did take two hours. I, I did spend right. most of uh, Monday morning. And, and you're right. You, you got to go do it. 
Yeah. And the same and thing. Then go back I, I and looked look at it, it again. All, and then I started to rate it all. And then I went back again. And I'm yeah. like, oh, we'll change that one around. <laughs> and my thinking was, <laughs> well, that's why you can't get to <laughs> <laughs> There's two I didn't, yeah. I, I still have to so get homework get back on. To on this. Yeah, there was two that I, I didn't do my homework on and I wanted to look at it a little better. And my, like, my like coaching is go through it with an eye towards it can't all be high priority. No. Force yourself yeah. to deprioritize some stuff so right. that we don't kill ourselves. That's the other reason I want to go back to it. Okay. Um, well. And just to remind you, and you'll get more details, um, we're not meeting on the 16th as a formal board, mm -hmm. but we've agreed to set up working sessions. Some of oh. you are getting emails on that from some of the department heads. Um, I will say the month of August, it was never the case that more than about two or three department heads were around, so we're just now kind of regathering. Okay. Well, I, you know, I'm a little concerned about, you know, a tight window and sudden urgency yeah. after... Uh, and, well, and then all of a sudden, it's yeah. like, you know, one person's important, but the other one isn't. Yeah, I, I, I would tailor I'm this. Not particularly happy with that. The meeting on the 16th, <laughs> in my mind, was to look at the results of the goals, the priorities, and to start the discussion as opposed to finish anything or ur urgently do anything. We don't have that yet, which is fine. That doesn't mean, but it's still an opportunity if it's important. For any of these groups to meet doesn't mean they all have to meet on the 16th it's just you all indicated you were probably in town and you had you were willing to come in and spend some time yep. and uh, and certainly well before that i'll have to get a stronger sense from you about when are you available that day are you available at four in the afternoon at six at night whatever it is and we'll try to set some things up well my only feedback uh, is our meeting is not is I way in advance yeah and i saw that. and it was laid out without Dialogue, really. Yeah, there's really no context, and I'd much rather have both of the board members there than have one of us. And yeah. my, my problem is I can't do it on a Thursday. I've got a bunch of other stuff going on. Well, you know, it may be a little heavy-handed. You keep a pretty tight business schedule to insist on a daytime meeting. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, that's a little over the top, if you ask me. Um, well, and that that's strategic planning, right? Yeah. That one is impossible that it's one thing in one group. It's going to have to be lots of things and lots of subgroups. You're going to have lots of strategic plans. But, but the question but the is... subgroups are, I mean, you only have, you have five people. Right. You have three professional people and right. two volunteers. Yeah. So how many subgroups can you have with five people? And that's why I think that group especially has to look at the goals and from that extract you know, well, what their mission is. Given What's, that, I, I think it's... I'm going to suggest. I think it's non-productive to have, yeah. you know, uh, four of the five people available. And, and I, I know some of the groups have met. Most of the groups have not met. I'm going to suggest that we actually postpone it because it's it's going to be an abbreviated meeting. Otherwise. Well, uh, you know, I haven't been on the 16th as originally proposed. Ever. I, I mean, I don't have any problem with it at another time. I mean, I, I just. I mean, there was two tiny selections of time. Right. Yeah, seven um, in the morning and one in the afternoon or something. Yeah, no, it was like 11.30 in the morning and on one day and 3 o'clock in the afternoon on another day. Is it, is it perhaps? And you work for yeah. a living all day, all right. day, every day. Most of the night, too. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm going to write Ruth back and suggest we just postpone it until the 16th because uh, It'd be easier from a planning perspective. Hmm. All right. Well, I think we just have to take a leadership position and. Or maybe we just move forward with all four other people to meet. Well, that's the John's point. I think, but you know, I think you need a specific agenda and reason to meet. What are you going to accomplish? Is, and I don't, don't have that yet. Well, I haven't yeah. seen it. I'm not part of it, although uh, a couple of you have asked me to join that one, and I probably should. I think you. I. I think you got to be there. I Bob. think you got to yeah. be there, Bob. Yeah, and I'm fine with that. Okay. So yeah, many things I, I, flow I out of that. I just assumed you were at that one. <laughs> this, it felt we so we limited it to one person per, I mean, only one assignment for each person. Yep. But as a practical matter, that's not going to work. Yeah, I think, I think maybe 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 there's an opportunity yeah. to rebalance or on, and recalibrate yeah. Yeah. the folks that are assigned to those so I, that I, you I line up with people who are the best person for it and have the uh, have the time available Yeah, for we have it. a group of two, for instance, that's the DPUW director and the town accountant. I think they're doing communication. 
I'm like, hmm, how did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> No. And I can yeah. tell you, DPW we have, we does have a do a certain group amount of, of two with me and Jean who are spending our time on zoning bylaw, so really, right. yeah. <laughs> not a lot getting I don't know done if you, on any that one. Any of you one. got the first uh, DPW monthly newsletter last week? But yeah. Hopefully, you did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. It was very nice. Good start. Yeah. Yeah. I better talk about West Street next. Yep. <laughs> All right. Do we want to go to uh, minutes? Let's move that the board of selectmen approve the minutes of June tenth, two thousand fourteen, as amended. Second. Okay. Any discussion or changes? Yeah. Paula, do you have the message that I sent you? Because I can't log in. I, I can't log in here because I've got a new computer. I didn't bring. I do have changes, but um, give me a unfortunately computer. don't have. Uh, if I can get into my email, then I could see. Yeah, it, my but paper. I can't get into my email. Mm -hmm. I believe my phone's dead. Maybe my phone's not dead. Sure. Do you know what the code is yes. to get in? Oh, perfect. Any other comments? Prove me wrong. <laughs> You're in. Okay. Uh, no other comments. All those in favor of the. I um, oh. I I need to open up my. Oh. My we notes have here. Notes. I actually do have some. Uh, some. Try it again. Yeah. I'm just going to get into my Gmail. Oh. All actually, I don't all. think I did it. All right. Uh, for the tenth, um, page three. Discussion action items. Uh, there's a you that should be a she related to maternity leave. So town accountant Sharon Angstrom noted that the PC card started right before she left for maternity leave. Um, this is on the tenth. What? This is on the tenth. Yeah, on the tenth. Page three. Discussion action Not a items. I can't fix it. I know. Actually, I could here. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Uh, ooh, I don't know if it works. No, don't worry. I'd rather not do that. They're all the same. All the yeah. are the same. Oh, all right. Uh, the other thing is, in the reports and comments section related to Oakland Road property, uh, there's a comment that I indicated we need to make it clear to the school committee that the property belongs to the Board of Selectmen and the disposition is the selectmen's decision, but I don't recall saying that. I thought it might have been Dan or Kevin or John that brought that up. I don't... Where are you again? Well, no, you made a comment. H, uh, I think it was more along the lines of uh, it could be made available, but only through the selectmen. Do you remember saying that? Mm -hmm. No, but no, the Dan Dan did that in a reference to the minutes on, on page one. Say as much, right? Well, yeah, that is the motion I proposed. There was right. some discussion around it, and I can't remember exactly who said what. But uh, well, I mean, if you think that I said it, maybe I did. So. Yeah. I, I, just as a side comment, the letter was significantly softer than the motion. Oh, good. <laughs> significantly kind of probably better. Yes. I, it wasn't what, really what the board voted. They got the message. Yeah, I hope so. They definitely got the message. Okay. Any other changes? No. Okay. So, uh, you all right? You so Paula already has the changes right. that I voted, right. so right. it was a, a you instead of a, sh a, a right. she, she instead of a you. All those in, so, all those in favor of the amendments on June 10th, 5 0. Move with the Board of Selectmen approve the minutes of July 30th, 2014 as amended. Uh, second. All those in favor? Move the Board of Selectmen approve the minutes of August 12th, 2014 as amended. Second. I, I did have some changes in this one. Um, that was related to the, the, the FinCom amend amendment. Okay. And so what I said is I, I noted that I'm proposing an amendment because I was the one who was actually said we should have this on page 21 of the handout related to the Finance Committee. 
this would add a sentence under duties that gives them. So that was the original. Um, I'm sorry, what page are you on? Is it 6C2? Yeah. Page 2. 6C2. 3.3. Marcy West noted. Yeah. Yeah, the Finance Committee didn't propose this, so I don't want it to say that because I was the one that proposed it. Because the Finance Committee, the, that was after we started looking at this, we found out that, the, that it was an oversight. So Marcy West proposed. Right. And then I added a sentence at the end because it's an oversight and it's fixing an oversight in the initial uh, wording. Oh, that allows them to investigate okay. things. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Any other changes? No. All those in favor? Five zero. Are there any uh, suggested changes to the executive session? If not, we can approve them here. Move that the Board of Selectmen approve the executive session minutes of August 2nd, 2014 as written. Uh, uh, second. Okay. Discussion? Um, <coughs> roll call. Hang on, Paul, I did send you some changes, I think, to this. Oh, for um, the executive? Oh, then we need to approve them in the executive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hang on, let me make sure. Yeah, let's, let's see if they're in there. Twelve minutes. I think you just said uh, it. The eight to two first. No, they're not an executive. Okay, we're fine. She's already got my All right. All right. Any changes to the so good. Uh, yep. Any changes to the executive minutes of August two? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Yeah, you got a uh, poll oh, by sorry, roll, roll call. call. Mm. John Halsey. Yes. You approved. Dan. Yes. Edinger. John Arena. Yes. Marcy West. Yes. Kevin. So. Yes. Okay. okay. Move the board of selectmen approve this executive session minutes of August twelfth, two thousand fourteen, mm -hmm. as written. Uh, second. Second. Okay. Roll call. John Halsey. Yes. Yes. John Rini, yes. Marcy. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Okay. And that we have our business. Yes. Motion to adjourn. We look forward to stuck to adjourn the meeting at uh, 10 57 p.m. Uh, second. All those in favor? Good night. Fade to black. Ah. Is this for, so what do I have? Warren. Oh, yeah. I think we all signed it. Yeah. Get that going. Go sit down with. Um, I guess Dick Robbins and then Jim McCarthy.